Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Evolution of Snake. I'm Zach. And I am the Bone Collector. Here <laughs> to deliver you a skeleton that I have recently excavated from the deepest pits of hell, I would say. But I would say Literally, hell. from hell. From hell itself. <laughs> Madeline is serving as, if you're familiar with the Real Housewives of Atlanta, there is a character on that show called Sheree. And Sheree is she known Sheree. as the bone collector. She takes the gossip and she delivers it to the mm -hmm. other ladies and starts drama. And that is basically it's what unbiased. Madeline is doing today. It's unbiased journalism. Many of you it's, may be familiar it's with dirty my, work. my... Right. It, 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 my mm -hmm. previous sachet into the world of unbiased, fair journalism. Uh, hard journalism. Because Yale Daily News. Ha hardcore Yale Daily News style journalism. Mm -hmm. Because many, mm -hmm. many moons ago, I cannot believe how many years ago this was. I want to say it was seven or eight now, which is fucking crazy. That disturbs me. I filmed me. a snuff film by the name of Moon Rush on Sunday, <laughs> in which I chronicled what happened um, with the gloves. If you the don't gloves. know the what love I'm talking hate about, gloves. <laughs> you should probably the Taylor Swift go watch the on a Sunday. Um, it is wonderful. It is art, actually. Is, and you know what's so funny art. is in our last episode, someone asked us, Madeline, or actually it was on our live stream, someone asked us, will you ever do another noon roast? And we emphatically we said we no. laughed, we chortled, we giggled. <laughs> we were like, a perfect storm of such material could never emerge to warrant something like noon roast and god said i have a gift for you and he brought a little stork from heaven above to drop us what has just happened and before we tell you what just happened we have to remind you that in fact we are now on patreon patreon.com slash swiftologist you can get two extra episodes a month for six dollars you can get video episodes as well for ten dollars we have the besties tier which is unfortunately sold out but we will be making more spots and also maybe opening up a new tier so that you can listen to the besties episode and request your own personalized evolution of a snake moment but you know the patrons we have to thank them so much because we've had an overwhelming response and you guys are really making the citizen journalism that we're doing today possible. You are funding the enterprise. And the more patrons that we have, the more forays into narrative journalistic storytelling we can endeavor upon. And I don't know about you, Madeline, but I am grateful for the patrons and excited for today. I am very grateful for the patrons because if it weren't for the patrons, I do not believe that this day could be happening. I don't think that we could be sitting mm -hmm. here um, about to mm -hmm. get into perhaps the juiciest piece of Swifty drama since, you know, 2015, essentially. Yeah, yeah literally. I mean, I mean, it's I, been I, a while. I mean, this is this is delicious content that the likes of which. I have not yet seen what we are discussing. I'm sure you know, because it is still going on to this day. We I am on TikTok. About... I'm, I'm watching it happen yeah. in real time. Watching it happen in real time. The, <laughs> the, the, the crucifixion the herself, of <laughs> Ashley, Ashley Leachin. Ashley lookalike Leachin. Anybody, it would baffle me if you didn't know who this was, but she has become popular in the last few months for, for being a Taylor Swift lookalike and for, for, for being terminally on TikTok. Just TikTok, mm -hmm. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Every day, That's every day. She's a and she, you know, every day. She, she TikToks, she posts pictures and videos of herself either looking exactly like Taylor Swift, in her opinion, or mimicking some aspect of Taylor Swift's life. She's got Taylor, she's got a cat that's the same breed as Taylor Swift's. She's kind of starting to copy her mannerisms too. Like it's all, it's getting weird, as Nene Leakes would say. It's getting weird. And the reason why we are covering Ashley is because she was invited to the Grammys and disinvited as her plane was taxiing on the tarmac at LAX. And her response to it has been so unbelievably unhinged that Madeline and I looked into this and we said, there's, there's gotta be more to this story. Like th this kind of crazy doesn't just emerge overnight. It has to be a story that starts from her birth. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest, that's what we're investigating here. All the information we're discussing is in the public domain. She is a public figure with over a million followers. I think she can handle having a story about her life told. We're, we're actually being her 
biographers here. We're, we're telling you who Ashley is. Um, so the bare bones that you need to know before we go into it are that Ashley is, she's a wife, she's a mother, she is formerly a nurse, and she is a Taylor Swift impersonator. She likes to deny that fact, which is very interesting. She's at turns enamored by the fact that she can mimic Taylor Swift, but also in denial about the fact that that's what people consume her content for. And it is from this cognitive dissonance that all of the crazy starts. So Madeline, let's, this is, I mean, this is part one, the girl, the wig, the legend. So take it away, girly. Oh, by the way, also, I have not heard any of what Madeline has written. This is all news to me. So I'm finding out. I oh, collected I what the happened. bones. I collected the bones. I am here to deliver the bones, not just to you, but also to Zach. Uh, Zach knows some of the bones because some of the mm -hmm. bones were just too fucking delicious. Too to juicy. Myself. Too juicy. But um, it is insane to me the number of bones that I dug up. And also the number of people that this has reached. I have been asked, even by the most unplugged, local, normal people that, like my coworkers at work, who don't even know, you know, their ass from their head. Have you heard about this girl who looks just like Taylor Swift getting invited and then uninvited to the Grammys? Have you heard about this, Madeline? Have it's I transcended. heard? Have I heard <laughs> about it? I have got the body in my bedroom <laughs> and I have been examining it. Yes, I have heard about it. Um, six months ago, I couldn't have picked this girlie out of a fucking lineup, whether she's in her Taylor Swift cosplay or not. And now, even outside of the Stanny universe, <laughs> we- She's your mother, familiar your sister. Like, she, 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 she's Taylor Swift's wig. She's the wig. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to, that is, I've, thought about it long and hard. Who is she? What is she? She's a wig. <laughs> She's, a She's wig. a wig. And, I, I, and Taylor's I, never worn a wig. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> I mean... I noted, Taylor well, also, has also, never worn a wig. It's, imp it's important to notice or to, to point out that there is a storied tradition in this fandom of hating Taylor Swift lookalikes. I don't know what it is, but people who look like Taylor attract a very specific well, ire from the fandom. It's jealousy. I mean, call it what it is. I mean, mm. if you look like one of the most beautiful women in the world, let alone, you know, somebody who theoretically, your idol. Like, she's your idol, your queen. somebody looks just like her and you wish you wish you looked just like her. I mean, most likely. I mean, I kind of get like, I understand it. I don't really spend my time you know, attacking Hating people. Well, people so who bear thought, passing resemblances to Taylor. <laughs> well, I thought for a couple, like the Ashley stuff has been kind of simmering for a few months, right? Like people have been talking about how weird it is. And I always think lookalikes are weird. So I just kind of brushed it off as, oh, this is just another one of those girlies that's impersonating Taylor and people are being like unduly harsh, but no, oh no, there's psychosis involved. There's, there's mental illness. At play no, here. There's a lot of layers here, and I, and I would invite you to come with me and peel back the layers of the onion. The first question that I want to ask you, that I want to ask the audience, is how does a wig from TikTok, <laughs> whose only interesting trait is being able to bear passing resemblance to one of the most famous women in the world, get invited to music's <laughs> biggest night? How the fuck did this happen? Well, I know how it happened. <laughs> I know how it happened. Journey with me, if you will, to the year 2020. Worst <laughs> 2020. year ever. Yes, worst mm -hmm. year ever. Uh, one of the most historically significant years of our generation. Many things occurred this year. Something in particular occurred this year that was buried amongst the headlines. A diamond in the rough, if you will. A needle in the haystack of the year that was 2020. A girl moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Does that sound familiar to anybody else? I'm not talking about Taylor Swift. There was no guitar, but there was a stethoscope. Because a girl moved to Nashville in 2020 to pursue her dreams of being a trauma nurse. Yes, I'm talking about the girl, the wig, <laughs> Ashley Leachin. Taylor Swift looked like allegedly. Who is she? What does she want from us? What does she want from Taylor? 
And does she, in fact, look anything like Taylor Swift? Well, come back even further with me <laughs> to the year 2006. To a parallel story, in the same city, in the United States of America, a girl named Taylor Swift moves to Nashville to chase her dream. Heard of her. Achieves her dream. And puts out her, <laughs> self, her debut self-titled country record. Somewhere in America, there was a dark horse <laughs> waiting in the wings <laughs> who was allegedly 14 years old. I know she was 12 because I discovered she's the exact same age as me. The wig oh. is 29. And you want to hear something really weird? She was born three mm -hmm. days after me. Oh, so mean? you guys really are what sisters. You're sisters. Well, she was born. Listen to this. You want to hear something really funny? She was born on mm -hmm. the 13th of October. Oh, my God. She was cursed. <laughs> she was she was touched by black magic when she entered she, this world. Something is good. <laughs> there is something there. Uh, apparently, when she was 14... 12. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is this is important hears, to point out how ludicrous yeah. this is. This is very right. suspect. Very suspect. She hears Tim McGraw for the first time, and she's instantly hooked. And this is a story that is true for thousands of now 30-something-year-old women around the country. But is it true for Miss Ashley? Well, Wait. let's find out. It all began in 2006 for Taylor, and according to Ashley... It all began for Ashley in 2006, when she was plucked from obscurity on the streets of wherever the fuck and claims that she was, I can't make this up, she said she was scouted in the year 2006 to be a Taylor Swift lookalike. In the year 2006, she says, quote, I was in middle school. Yes, she was. When I first started to notice the resemblance to Taylor, we had the same hairstyle and a very similar look. It was just fun because I love her so much. Well, we know she Question. does. Question. Pause. Mm -hmm. Question. Mm -hmm. Could you find any evidence of Wig having this same hairstyle as Taylor Swift? Because Taylor no, Swift's hairstyle, I've never seen that that hairstyle on another person. I've never seen it. It is a Especially really not that identifying then. trait. Not back Especially then. Especially not back then. I mean, also... I think you're going to get into this, but who the fuck was trying to hire a Taylor Swift lookalike in 2006 when exactly. she was respectfully nothing? She was nobody. She was sitting in a, a like a, her fucking late, that big machine records, putting her own singles into envelopes and mm -hmm. mailing Shaking them to hands radio with the radio stations yeah. in a van. Her debut, her album debuted at 50,000 units sold in 2006. Nobody knew. And Ashley who Swift was. was one of them? Ashley was one of the <laughs> purchasers of that fifty thousand records. Hmm. Well, it's like hmm. also let's say the, let's say theoretically, theoretically, let's just say that this is okay. True. Give okay. her the benefit she's, of the doubt. She's walking. She's walking around. She's twelve years old. I know this again. She can say she was fourteen <laughs> all she wants, but she was twelve. I know this because she's my exact <laughs> age. Anyway, <laughs> who would see a twelve-year-old walking the streets, just in the mall? You know, going to mm -hmm. Abercrombie and Fitch, wherever you know, where twelve-year-old girls were limited to. Claire's, mm -hmm. you know, all these places. Mm -hmm. One who would see a 12 year old girl and say, You look just like this 17 year old country girl that, all, that no one knows, that nobody knows. I mean, okay, so Can I think I this is, that? you know what? This is, this is the original sin. This is the original lie. And this is such a crazy thing to lie about because it's so unbelievable. And that's something that really shakes me about Ashley's lies is that some of them are so audacious. And that's when you know someone's a real liar because real liars tell big, weird, convoluted, easily disprovable lies. Then there just end up being so many of them that you stop trying to figure out what's the truth. And that's the trick of being a liar. But Madeline, well, please take us, take, take us to 2006. The, that's the most important thing about it is that these two lies, these two lies, the first lie that she looks exactly like Taylor and has ever since she was a kid to the point where she the was hair. on the street all the time. Has she produced and evidence of the hairstyle pictures? Listen, uh, listen, I get into that, baby girl. I get into that. Oh. <laughs> this is insane. Uh, the short answer to that is no, but we'll get into why and what she says about this in the future. Um, so, first lie, she has been an OG Swifty since 06. We know that's not true. Second lie. Fake. Not true. She looks exactly like Taylor and always has. It doesn't have to even try to look like mm. Taylor. Mm -hmm. This is this is the, this is the core. This is kind of like the heart of the body. You know what I mean? This is what keeps it pumping. This is what keeps it going. 
Okay, so this is this it's is her just backstory. a perfect is- coincidence that she looks just like Taylor, and it's not her fault. And everyone leave her alone because she's not doing it on purpose. She just happens to be Taylor's twin. She just happens to kind of tilt her head in a certain way and mimic her actions and buy the same clothes and cosplay as her. But it's a coincidence because she just naturally was a clone. She was born a clone of Taylor Swift. And it, therefore, it's not weird. That's kind of, I think that's her. That's, that's the her mentality. She's currently living. So that, that's yes. her. That's her backstory. That is what I dug up on. On you know who who she says she was as a child coming up in the world. And, you know this would be in the in the you know early parts of her Wikipedia page if she had one. Um, mm. Now this is this is her into, Wikipedia page. Th- We're making this it. is it. We, this is <laughs> they're gonna transcribe this. This is all the. Mm-hmm. This is all you need to know. Um, mm-hmm. So back in twenty twenty. Ashley moves to Nashville, again, to pursue her dreams of being a trauma nurse, which is wonderful. But here's what she says. She says that the move to Nashville was not only monumental for her in the pursuit of her dreams and her career, but it also radically changed her life for not just herself, but for her family. Because as soon as she got to Nashville in the year 2020, she says that she could not go to a mall or a Target without getting mistaken for Taylor Swift. Quote, my <laughs> patients, coworkers, sake. and random bystanders for could fuck's... not believe how much I looked like Taylor. And since we were in a pandemic wearing masks, I was stopped much more, even with my brown eyes. And her mask on? Is that what she's trying to say? Yes. It, 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 and it's like, okay, m- Miss Girl, what is Taylor Swift? What is one of her most definitive traits? To the point where a no, uh, somebody eyes. who doesn't even give a shit, the blue eyes. If Her I foxy say, blue eyes. Nobody would see a girly walking around with brown eyes and be like, that is Taylor. In, in mask season, absolutely fucking not. Like that. Not. And there's a reason why she was always, no before before she came out as a Democrat, she was called the Aryan queen because of her characteristic Aryan features. She's a bottle blonde and she's got bright blue eyes that are shaped in a very unique Taylor Swift way. That also has always been a defining characteristic. In fact, it's something people used to make fun of her for when she was younger, the way that her eyes looked. Everybody said she looked like a cat. And Ashley's eyes are not shaped the same way. Not only are they not brown, they don't have the foxy element, but I digress. It makes no sense, but this is what she <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> This is not true. <laughs> like, this is a lie. This is a uh, lie. And I mean, also, this is like, in this Nashville, is, like is that why what she's, is she alleging, like. is she alleging that people in Nashville Nobody outside of, nobody outside of Nashville, nobody outside of Nashville knows who Taylor Swift is. Didn't you know this? It, it, it was only in 2020 when she moved to Nashville <laughs> that her life radically changed. <laughs> also, Taylor has not lived in Nashville for like, no. if she, this is another thing. If Ashley was a fan of Taylor's, or knew anything about Taylor, she would know that she hasn't demonstrably lived in Nashville since 2014. It's been near a decade since Taylor was frequenting Nashville on a regular basis. I mean, do you see the layers are starting to start to pile up the bones? Now, in addition to moving to Nashville, it was also the pandemic. What were a lot of people doing during the pandemic? They were engaging on social media. The wig. Making TikToks. Downloaded the TikTok <laughs> app. And that, she says, is where it all took off. And to a point, she's actually quite right. But we'll get into that in a moment. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> here's, what I want, here's what I want to say. So she has told us that you have been getting, that she has been getting mistaken for Taylor Swift since the year 2006. Now, she strikes me as someone who is obviously a compulsive attention seeker, which is not a crime. Nobody's going to jail nope. for one of those Many such cases, many such yeah, cases. It's, it's, it's what TikTok is literally for. But this mm-hmm. person has been walking around looking exactly like Taylor Swift and has not cashed on that until the year 2020 in spite of loving her so much has been an og swifty since 06 she was a teenager and a young adult i know because again she's three days younger than me and she loved taylor when she was on tumblr.com meeting fans and sending fans packages 
and she had a needle in a haystack. She looked exactly yeah. like her, allegedly. And she where was she? Use this? She didn't but log also, on where was she? at any point. Did you? Had, did you see her? No. On top of we, and we were everybody. chronically online. We yeah, were in the trenches every I, fucking day. That would have stuck out to me before. Never seen the name but, until 2020. In addition, it, it's not just a possible way to get to Taylor. It's a gravy train. Mm -hmm. You could have been making mm -hmm. money on this for years, change. and you haven't been. But here's what she says. Well, she, she also was approached to be a lookalike. Well, she has an excuse. Listen to this. She claims she has had many opportunities to monetize herself looking like Taylor, and she has turned them all down. Oh, why? And she, she has loves Taylor she so much. She says she says money isn't everything. It's not about the money. Remember this phrase. <laughs> it comes up a lot. She says this a mm -hmm. lot. And it's like, I, I guess I kind of, but she, she That's lives in worse. a very nice house. She lives in a That's real nice place. That's kind of worse. Mm -hmm. But yeah, also, it's weird. weird. That's weird. People if don't get, if you're doing remember. this not for the money, if you were doing this for the money, I'd be like, you know what? Get your bag. Get it. If it's you all can. about the bag, and baby. I, I love a girl boss. I love, yep. and you know, that's very Taylor Swift to embrace your inner girl boss. If she was really impersonating Taylor well, she would harness and she would embrace the calculating business savvy nature of her. But no, the, 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 the pretending that what she's doing is some sort of mission, I think is what is really weird. Is what's very odd about it. Well, what's important is that in spite of not trying to monetize these, you know, traits that she has, she does have an agent. Mm. <laughs> I looked it up. I found the agent. A publicist. I am the bone collector. But it's not really that hard to find because she's actively trying to book gigs because Doc McStuffins has not only been dreaming of being a nurse, she has also been dreaming of being an actor since she was a child and model. That's an interesting nugget. Oh. Mm. And she's always wanted to be in the public sphere, which there's nothing <clears> wrong <throat> with that. Nothing wrong with wanting to be famous. Um, but it does mm -hmm. kind of explain a lot about her now, doesn't it? Well, um, the chronic attention seeking. Yeah. Which makes I mean, sense. That's, it, it, it just makes sense. Um, she, she apparently, no, this is important. This, well, hold on. This comes up later. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, let's, I want to stay on the, I want to stay on the, let's stay on the. <laughs> the chronology. Um, I, I went on her page, which by the way, you should, I mean, it's not hard to find. You can just Google it. Um, you guys have got to see the shit that's on this, uh, fucking agency website. It is some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. Her headshots are hilarious. I am obsessed with these photos. And there's I'm a video. There's a video, you know, when you're, uh, you know, trying to get acting gigs, maybe for like small parts and stuff, you might do some, like, I don't know what they're called, but you know, you film Skits? like a fake Like a reel? Ad, a skit. Oh, a reel. Like a, yeah. Like a skin. Mm. You know what I mean? And there's a video of this and you have to see this. I have a screen recording. <laughs> I have it. it. I want to see it. You I need to see it. this anytime you want because it's just available. But just in case everything goes down in flames and she falls off the face of the earth, which could be happening any time now, I screen recorded it. Um, it needs to be seen. To what be is she leader. doing in this sketch? She, what is, she is in full Taylor lookalike. No way. Um, she is surrounded by cats. She's got her like night, like 1989, like lipstick hairstyle. She's got like the, uh, you know, like 20, uh, 22 video, like, you know, framed glasses on. And she refers to her cats as her children. She says she's petting the cats and she goes, would you, would you like some more treats? You know, Mr. Belvedere or whatever the name of the cat is. And then she goes, I love my children. She has real children. <laughs> you can't make this up. I mean, I felt like I found a diamond. I was like, what is this? What is that? I mean, actors, like, when you want to start an acting, you do have to do, like, a lot of embarrassing shit. This was bad. Like, this this lady can't is, act is and this, I can Is this an ad for her impersonating Taylor, or is it for an acting role? No. Is it like, I'm so good at acting? That's the weird thing. It, it, Taylor's not even mentioned. It's an ad but she's for, like, in, a furniture But she's store. in full Taylor regalia. Contacts? Are the, the contacts in? Oh, I can't tell from a distance. Uh, oh, she's, it's kind of that, like that would be a you know key I mean? detail. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Um, I'm shaken by this. I need to see it. Yeah, it's incredible. You have to watch it. Um, 
Anyway, and it, it, that happened. I found that. I was speechless. But then I also found that she has <laughs> no a separate on the same a- agency website that is for uh, something entitled The Ashley Leach and Family, where there's, like, pictures of her, oh, you know, with, no. her, with her family and her children, and, and she's trying to book, like, the entire family for acting games. That's my understanding. I don't know what Ashley Leach and Family is, mm. why, where, what. I, I, I just know I found this. And in spite of having all these fucking, you know, I, I'm desperate for a job pictures and videos of her, you know, fabulous acting career. She says she's not pursuing any gigs of being the bargain brand Taylor Swift you find at the bottom of the bin because, quote, it got to the point where they wanted me to nail down that look so much to wearing blue contacts, and I refused to do that, end quote. Now, why is that where she draws a line? Because I've seen a lot of shit. I've seen a but lot hasn't she, But of hasn't she She done has. That? Yeah, she does it all the time. She does it all the but time. She, it's because but she draws nobody the wants line to book her. Doing it exactly. for a check. <laughs> it's because nobody wants to book her. <laughs> Call it what it is. <laughs> there's no reason other than she cannot be booked. She doesn't. She can't. No like, one wants it. Book. There's she can't sell book. the product. They don't want it. Uh, <clears throat> She also has an IMDb page, and there's nothing on it. Uh, that that doesn't have anything to do with anything, but I thought it was We really have an crazy. IMDb page, by the way. Someone made one for the evolution of a snake. Somebody made one for... Oh, so other people can make this for you. Yes, Why would somebody but make I guarantee you she first? made it herself. She made it herself, I who can tell you that. Who would do that? Zach, that's really but... weird. <laughs> like, who would do that? Okay. All right, all right, all right. I wanna, I wanna get back to to the family. Yeah, I wanna get back the to gospel. the gospel. Fucking family. So I, I, I told Zach about this already, but she describes in two completely different articles, two totally different instances. I'm not fucking kidding you, of her children pointing at a screen where Taylor Swift is present and going, <laughs> "Mommy, is that you?" Now here's the first time. Quote. Every time Taylor Swift pops, pops up on a video, like her NYU speech, my son was like, Mommy, is that you in the purple gown? End quote. Time two. Her quote. Her child said my, the word gown. Okay. Aren't my, children little? <laughs> They're young. Like, I, I don't, don't know. The word I don't know. Gown is in their vocabulary. But anyway, yes. Uh, my daughter was scrolling through Netflix a while back and she saw Taylor's documentary, Miss Americana. There is an image of Taylor on profile with the light hitting her face, and it looks just like me. My daughter said, Mommy, is that you on Netflix? I had to say no, but I thought it was funny. Now, ladies, in addition to the headshots that I viewed on the agency website being fucking hilarious, it is worth it to note that when she is not actively doing the Taylor Swift cosplay, when she's not in her lighting, when she's not getting the angle just the way she wants it, there is truly, and I mean this, no Taylor to be seen. I will admit to everybody listening that when she puts the effort in, she can bear a passing resemblance. Yes, she can make it look from afar like she's if you squint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I get like that. I get, but these, 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 these I mean, there's no Taylor. There's no Taylor. It's a potato head. When she's not in drag, the headshots are shocking because that like that's what she really looks like when she's lit like a normal human being and wearing like normal people exactly. clothes. No make like her bare face, you know, like natural makeup. She you know looks I mean? nothing like her, truly. And those scenarios, like there is, she's just a white person with I mean, blonde and, hair. And, and like, like that's all they have in common. This is how I would hope she's walking around her own home, not just walking <laughs> around looking like Taylor. And, and, also, her profile and like, specifically is not a good Taylor angle for her. Her best Taylor angle well, is like head on, half the face out of frame, like head tilted a little bit. Like the the profile wouldn't be her strongest Taylor resemblance. But um, these instances didn't happen. I think we can safely say that this is made up. This is, this is we, nonsense. We can safely say that. We can safely say that it's weird as hell. <laughs> I just mm-hmm. say something like that. I make something like that up. And she the says evidence that, that she pulls up and she hates it when people say you don't look like Taylor. Oh, it makes her so oh, really, really gets really her mad. going. It makes her really well, mad. Because it's her thing. It's her only thing. Well, <laughs> she says, allegedly, she mm-hmm. does not go out with a red lip and her hair done to look like Taylor unless she's going to a party or an event. Now, mm. my friends, mm. 
I need you to go look at these headshots. I need that? you to, I need you to go look at these headshots. And I need you to go look at her TikTok too, because uh, you will find a wealth of her forcing herself to look like Taylor. I mean, I don't, I, you know, I mean, that if that was her bag, if she would just admit my bag is making myself look like Taylor, okay, great, we love it, woo, like there's no problem with that. It is the denial of how hard she tries that really rubs people the wrong way. Well, also, the other thing is, is that like when we say when she's in Taylor drag or in Taylor regalia, she has different Taylor drags. And that is what she also doesn't admit to. So she'll be like, I'm not even trying to look like Taylor. And then she'll do like an identical copy of like the bejeweled outfit and be like, this is what it's like when I try to look like her. But the thing is, is that she has varying degrees of Taylor cosplay. Like she has a version of Taylor cosplay that she does when she's in normal clothes, when she's wearing glasses, when she's just That's at home one. by herself. She's one. still trying to look like Taylor, but to her, She's just being Ashley. This is just what I look like. No, it's not. You are, and it's not just that she's trying to look like Taylor on her day off. She's fucking acting like her too. She's doing the hunchy shoulders, the way she moves her hands, the way she talks, the cadence in her voice. She literally, there are so many different ways in which she is single white femaling Taylor. It is not just when she's going to an event or when she's going to a party. No, no, no. It is a, this is a lived experience. This is a daily basis. This is every single day she's pretending to be Taylor and she's pretending to us that she's not pretending to be Taylor. It's gaslighting. That I don't is know what the, it is. <laughs> it's gaslighting. It makes like, me feel crazy. crazy. It makes me feel crazy. Yeah. The place where she does most of her cosplay, her, you know, Mrs. Potato Head, you know, affixing of the, you know, accessories <laughs> onto herself is on TikTok. Which brings mm -hmm. us to part two, which I have entitled The Turning Tides of TikTok. Um, as she said in her own words, TikTok is when it all changed. The pandemic is when things changed for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And for the weird, True. it was a fucking whirlwind. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll touch on is she a nurse or a target cashier or a starving actor in part three. But I really want to focus on what exactly TikTok did for her brand and for Ashley Leachin's reputation. Reputation. Because it is very reputation. core to reputation. the story. <laughs> um, she made her TikTok in August of 2020. And I would ask everybody, what happened in July 2020? Does anybody know? You're here listening to the evolution of a snake, so I assume you know Folklore came out. Um, Folklore was a huge commercial success for Taylor, and it did something really important for her career and for her image. Um, something that I don't think would have happened for maybe another few years, at least, if it weren't for quarantine. It made her a serious artist in the eyes of many of her naysayers. I mean, her writing was shining. There were no pop gimmicks. There was no Easter eggs. Just the art. And it reeled in a lot of people who had previously kind of been on the Taylor hate train. And well, this is important, right? In Miss Alleged OG <laughs> Swifty since 06. But again, we'll talk more about that in part three. Um, her TikTok, the first one that I found that is available to view is from August of 2020. Um, I'm the bone collector. So I was in the dirt. Mm -hmm. I was brushing the bones off. I was gathering samples. I was in the depths of her TikTok. I went back to the very fucking beginning and it is pretty squeaky clean down there for a dick site. I have to tell you, it's that mostly, seems suspicious. Yeah, it's mostly just her being like a little Stan, just, you know, a little white girl, Stanny. I love Taylor, which I mean, I can relate. I think many of been us there. Can. been there and down there in the depths. I think most of what she's trying to do down there is like trying to prove her swiftyhood and and a, a specific video that i found that you know is pretty generic but could prove an og swifty she is lip syncing to invisible and she says something to the effect of oh you know reflecting on my favorite high school heartbreak song okay mm. well I mean, invisible isn't a particularly hard song to find you know i'm not saying it's like no you know, oh inner circle so hard to find but it's like if i was it's not a heart have... question mark Ooh, that, that, you know, so put on I lie and maybe we'll talk. Yeah, maybe we'll mm -hmm. talk. You know, this is I, invisible is available to the masses. It's actually it on, is on the standard like, edition right. of debut. It's now on the standard edition of debut. It wasn't originally, but now it is on streaming. Um, so that's just a little nugget. You know, attempting to, 
you know, connect with the, you know, 29 year old Swifties like myself who have been there since the beginning. Like she allegedly has. Alleges. But what mm-hmm. I really want to talk about in regards to the TikTok is how fucking weird it all is. So I want to start, you know, I'm just going to start listing things off. So she's a Harry. Mm-hmm. So are many Swifties. But the biggest Harry we know is named Taylor Swift. Loving Harry Styles yep. is, yeah, it's core. Part of her it's brand. Core. I, I mean, people can disagree. To Harry Styles is a beard, whatever you want to say. PR, it doesn't matter. She, she loves She's him. out there. She loves, she loves a She Harry. wants to ask and, him a question, period. Right. Period. Number two, she has a video. I think it's the first TikTok that I saw, um, which is like why it's so obvious mining and cleaning up had occurred down there. To me, like, obviously, this this could not be the first TikTok you posted. But anyway, she is lip syncing along to Taylor Swift talking on Ellen, explaining that she's terrified of sea urchins. And guess who else is afraid of sea urchins, everybody? The wig! The wig is (laughs) also terrified of sea urchins. She was born on the 13th of a month, not December, of October. She has a Scottish Fold cat. She has multiple cats. They are named after Grey's Anatomy characters. Uh, what characters? <laughs> what are their names? Uh, I don't know these. I don't watch Grey's Anatomy. Sloan. Mark Sloan. Something okay. like Sloan. Yeah. You know, do you know Weird. who that is? It's a terrible name I don't, for a cat. I, can't, yes. I couldn't tell you the names of the other two cats because Sloan is the one that I've seen the most. I'm not ki- I have seen many of her TikToks. I'm the bone collector. So I know way too much about this lady. <laughs> um, so somebody asked her if she was popular in school. And she says, if by popular, do you mean eating my lunch alone in the bathroom? Uh, well, you know, who else was unpopular in school? Who else was Eating alone in the bathroom. And afraid of sea urchins. A lot of evidence of her, like, assimilating into, like, an AI. You know what I mean? Like, I am the copy, the carbon copy of Taylor. It's fucking weird. Why would you do that? (laughs) You can prove that you're a fan. Without... You don't have to say that I'm exactly like Taylor. Nobody said no, no. No Swifty. No average normal Swifty says. I mean, I know a lot of Swifties who, you know, they got like a lot of Swifties got into Grey's Anatomy because of because of Taylor, or they got into Harry or One Direction because Taylor dated him. Like, there's all kinds of normal ways. You know, even even like having the same style as her. I mean, it's questionable, <laughs> but I mean, it's not <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, but. It makes sense Despite. to be influenced, right? Because she's an influencer. Taylor she's, is that's, that's the a, world's she's biggest a celebrity, influencer. right? She's that's mm-hmm. what you know. People like to be like, "Oh, Taylor does this. I'll do it too." But nobody says, "Isn't it so weird how I'm just like Taylor?" <laughs> like <laughs> you, you can't <laughs> copy her because it's literally like trying to make a copy of the Taj Mahal. Your version is always going to look shitty as fuck. Your version is always going to look like a Lego Taj Mahal next to the beautiful palace. Sorry. It's not, it's just so weird. Like, that's it. I I mean, that's, and it's like weird because that's what anybody would think seeing this shit. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. in despite of all Everybody does think it's weird. Yeah. And in spite of the weirdoism, she says, this is what she says, the only reason that her videos get hate is simply because she looks just like Taylor. The hags are jealous. The ugly potatoes are jealous of my Mm -hmm. natural good looks. Here's the quote. There's not a lot I can do if I naturally have the same bone structure and eye shape as Taylor Swift. Hold up. Naturally. Hold up. You don't, okay, you don't have the same bone structure and eye shape as Taylor Swift. No. Let's start there. Let's just start there. Her smile, that's what we get, like... When the, you'll notice if you go through her TikToks, again, I'm the bone collector. I've seen them all. When she is trying her hardest to look like Taylor, she does not smile with her teeth. Because if she does, it, like, Taylor disappears. Like, you can't see it at all. She (laughs) smizes a lot because that's something that Taylor does. But the Mm -hmm. smile is where things start to go, you know, very creepy. Wrong. It's Mm -hmm. like Taylor through a wormhole. Or like Taylor, again, like Mr. Potato Head. You take the mouth off and you put a creepy mouth on it. It's weird. <laughs> it looks, it's weird. It is weird. weird. It's so weird. So I, yeah, I don't accept the idea that she has similar features to Taylor. It's like in certain lights at certain angles, but there are other people in this world that naturally look more like Taylor than Ashley does. 
We know there's a famous uh, Taylor lookalike from Australia that was really, she got a lot of hate, making the rounds in 2014, 2015. Google, Google it. Look at the video of her walking through the streets of Sydney looking like Taylor. She really looks like Taylor in all circumstances. Even when she's mm -hmm. smiling, she really yeah. looks like Taylor. Same body type, 1989 Taylor specifically. She, she's also given it up. She is not trying to look like Taylor. She just happened to look like Taylor. And a radio show said, hey, would you put on a Taylor Swift outfit and walk around and pretend you're Taylor Swift for fun? And she did. And Taylor met her. Taylor met her. See, Taylor that's what said, happens when you're normal. That's what happens yeah, when you're Yeah, you're normal. cool. Let me meet you. We actually look alike. As in, you are pretty much the closest thing that exists of me to a clone. Ashley tries to look like Taylor. That's the difference. She doesn't naturally look like Taylor. I refuse to accept this premise of hers. It's also important to note, another important piece of this puzzle, I, I talk about this more in part four, but uh, Taylor doesn't like lookalikes who do shit like that. Taylor likes mm -mm. lookalikes who, oh, this is so cute and fun. Ah, twinsies, it's like Carly Kloss. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like Carly Kloss. She does not like people who Copying her. Ass assimilate. <laughs> Look, she's in Taylor Swift's Can you blame mirror. her? She's on the other Can side you blame of the her? mirror. Bang she's, Taylor, she's in her balls. Taylor, Taylor please. Taylor, please she's in let the me pipes. in. She's in the pipes. It's so weird. <laughs> just let her another... move into your house for a second. Please. I have another really obnoxious quote from her about the same exact thing. This is this is hilarious. Quote, yeah. it's not easy being a lookalike. When you get negative <laughs> comments or told that anybody can put on red lipstick and have blonde hair, like Taylor. When I try to put on a dark wig, people say I look so much like Taylor in Wildest Dreams. So I really <laughs> can't win. You don't. She's if she, she looks nothing. If, if she had dark hair, she would look nothing like Taylor. Is there any photo evidence of her in a dark wig, Madeline? Yes. Um, and she does not look like Taylor. She also put on a red <laughs> wig and said, hashtag bad blood. And she doesn't look anything like Taylor in the bad blood video. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I mean, like, it just keeps going and going and going. The weirdoness. The, 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 the fucking... Delusion. Like, the rat. Snail girl. behavior. <laughs> weird. Um, okay, so she she wants everyone to know that people are hating on her for looking like Taylor. That's what, that's how she would like to characterize all the negative feedback. Well, and here's something that I've said and that a lot of people have said since pretty much the beginning, like when I first saw her on my radar, is that if she were simply a girly who noticed one day, hey, I can kind of make myself look like Taylor Swift when I really try, and I can make something out of this and make some money, wouldn't that be fun and cool? And I don't think anybody would take that much umbrage. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some jealous people, you know, she can bear a bag. passing resemblance, but but it's like a bag. But I don't think mm -hmm. she would be hated if it weren't for the fact that she's not just behaving like a lookalike. She does not put on her costume and go to your daughter's birthday party. She is not in Times Square with Elmo and Spider-Man. <laughs> she is in the comfort of her own morphing herself into a, copy, a, a fucking carbon copy print of the blondie. She's adopting her mannerisms. She's begun to speak like her. She has cats just like her. She has outfits just like her. But that's a coincidence. It's all a coincidence. All of these things are a coincidence mm -hmm. because they're just that yep. similar. And this, this, she clings to this. She, this is what she clings to. And she will fight people not, in her I'm not comments. doing it on purpose. Right. I'm, it's it turns just... people off of her. That is why you are not like her. Right. You're upset it's that I look so much like Tim, that you're, you're mad that I'm so close to being what you want to be. She assumes that everyone's jealous and everybody wants to look like Taylor. It's newsflash. I would like to just be myself. How about you, Madeline? Would you like to just be yourself or would you like to be she, Taylor Swift? She has no unique personality. It's not possible. Herself. That is, all of her content is Taylor related in some way, whether it's direct or not. Grey's Anatomy. Don't worry, darling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, and this is where Avril the entire, Levine. yes, the Grammy situation that we'll get into later, that's where this all starts to really unravel and fall apart because she is so delusional that she doesn't understand that her thing is looking like Taylor. She knows it in her head, but she's trying to delude herself and us into thinking that she's some sort of talented person. Demonstrably not true. It's, it, it is, it is, you know, fake news, not bad, not bad for a girl with no talent. 
You know what I mean? But, you know, I mean, she's she's so she's true. monetizing the weirdest thing I've ever seen monetized. But <laughs> it's true. I will say, you asked me bag. earlier. You asked me earlier. Is there any pictures of her from when she was younger? Now she does. She has one that she wheels out whenever you know some of the plastic surgery allegations start up again, or whenever people start saying you just put on red lip. She wheels this single picture of herself that she has out. She has, I'll get into more of why there's only one picture later. She has a lot of excuses for this. Um, She puts this image, I've seen it, I have a screen capture of it, uh, side by side with a horribly unflattering picture of Taylor from when she was a kid. (laughs) There are a lot of pictures of Taylor from from, from when she was young. And this is the one she chose. It is so unflattering. And she puts it up side by side. (laughs) Ha ha, see? Oh, 14. 14 year old Taylor. Oh, teens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, haha, see? I look just like her. Haha. Uh No, girly. <laughs> girly. <laughs> to my brothers in Christ, there's nothing there. There's two tap, girls tap, with tap. blonde hair. You're crazy. There's two girls with blonde hair. My brothers in Christ. Hello. Both, help in delu- me. both help, delusional. Help. They have that like, in common. What is going on? In one way. <laughs> it's literally like being gaslit. And people will go. You know, you go into the comments. She minds her comments, by the way. She cleans them up. So anything any, anything bad that you say about her in there will get deleted because she only wants the top comments to be positive. You look just like her. Everyone's a hater. She has these I followers. have a lot of comments on my TikToks about her saying, thank you for posting these. I can't see them because I'm blocked. I think she's very liberal. With she the mass blocks. Button. She mass blocks. I'll, I'll get into that. <laughs> That's crazy. Also, the, okay. the plastic surgery, do you get into that? Or is there more... Is there more no, on the, the, plastic the, the plastic surgery allegations? The plastic surgery is simply an allegation. There's no proof of that. How? Would, I mean, you and I, I mean, we're not plastic surgeons. I don't know what plastic surgery looks like. The girlies You're like to s- log on and pretend they're doctors. She had this <laughs> done. She had this done. She had this done. I don't know that, and I'm not going to pretend well, that. Well, it I didn't do. work. That's the thing. It didn't work because she doesn't look like Taylor. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if she did, that'd be, that'd be pretty sad. Really stupid. Uh, yeah. Okay, but back... She should get some to achieve her dream. She really should. Just invest well, I mean, in it. it was just, you know, I, I think that would be the final nail in the coffin. If she really did get plastic surgery to look like Taylor, <laughs> that that would be it. <laughs> Taylor would, would restrain in order. It's just a yeah, joke now, but trust me. Um, mm-hmm. She started to gain so much traction on TikTok um, that as much as I hate to admit this to you all, Taylor herself saw one of her TikToks. Um, at least one of them. When was this? When was this? It was in early September of this year. It was like, she was on TikTok doing Midnight's promo. You know what I mean? It was like, mm. I want to say it was either like a couple days after the VMAs when Midnight is coming, everybody, woo. So it was- When she was promo, doing her fan service. Yeah. Um, I believe that this comment will go on to haunt Taylor for the rest of her life because mm-hmm. yep. love it. Ashley, she spoke <laughs> Ashley will make on her. the book before she opened the cover. She spoke on the book before she read the synopsis, even. <laughs> she happened upon a TikTok, and she said, this is the exact quote, my mom just saw this and said, she looks like you with a little grinny emoji. And I would like to have a moment of silence. Because that, I think, <laughs> will go on to be Taylor's biggest regret in life. I don't. She did not <laughs> realize who she was commenting on. No, and she didn't understand. Mm-mm. I believe she didn't have any that context. I, right. If she had context, she would not. It came up on her FYP. If she even clicked on her profile, she would have been like, "Oh, oh no, oh no." Seeing one Ashley TikTok where she's dragging, like doing her drag of Taylor, if that just randomly came up and you knew nothing about her, you might comment, "You look like Taylor." You might because she goes to extreme lengths to elicit that response from you. And she got her, she got Taylor. She reeled her in, she got her. She reeled her right in, but Taylor escaped the hook. She fled, (laughs) she swam away. Hasn't been seen since, she's left the area. I think that Ashley's immediate reaction to getting this comment shot her chances of ever being within 200 feet of Taylor in the fucking face. Like it's never gonna happen, like it's over. Never. I (laughs) honestly believe this because it was so weird. So um, her initial reaction, there's like three videos. There's the video that got commented on. There's the video of her immediate reaction. Then there's a third follow-up video that, um, let's just get into it. So uh, she's screaming. She's crying. 
She's flipping the fuck oh. out the way that 15 year old kid. She's a mother. She's a mother. You know, <laughs> she, 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 she's a mother. Like, she's a mother. She's a trauma she, nurse. She's my age. She is my age, I have to say. 15 year olds, when Taylor notices them screaming, crying, throwing themselves on the floor. Yes, of course. When I was, Enjoy. When I was 21. I did that. Yeah, when I was 21 and Taylor noticed me, I, I didn't do that. I, I was like, oh my God, you know, oh my God, this is so cool. But I was not jumping up and down. We crying, screaming, screaming and crying. Not at, not even at 21, let alone at nearly 30. <laughs> so with a mortgage, okay. you babe, you have a mortgage. <laughs> you should not be screaming about Taylor Swift. Then there's the, there's a third video. Now this is where things got. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the moment that Taylor went, Oh no. Oh, no, 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 Who no, are you? No. What is this? <laughs> so in the video, she goes on and on thanking Andrea so much for what she said because she never had a mother figure. And so she lived vicariously through Taylor and the best day got her through her childhood, which is funny to me because like I have kind of, I have kind of a really terrible relationship with my mom and I fucking hate, it. I would not listen to someone else. Oh, I love my mom. I hate that shit. It, it's not fun. I don't understand that. What she's saying. I'm living vicariously through Taylor. Girl, we know. But anyway, so I, she goes on, she goes on. And this is a direct quote. Andrea, if you're seeing this, she's holding back tears. You are like the mother I never had. Just that little affirmation means more than you'll ever know. It's not the comment, it's the presence. So thank you. End quote. That Weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Weirdest thing I've ever seen in my the... life. Baby, this is not for TikTok. This is for the therapy <laughs> couch. Stop with the weirdo shit. Living vicariously through Taylor. I want to have Andrea as my mom. She's about to skin you, put you it's on like so, a suit, so that she can have so Andrea scary. as her mom. Like it's it's, it's, it's weird. awful, and it's like I want to be clear. Like I, it's like I Taylor. She doesn't want to be your friend. She doesn't want to be Taylor's friend. She doesn't want to notice. She doesn't want Taylor to notice her. She doesn't want to go to the concerts and be treated like a really extra special fan. She wants to get on stage, have the mic handed to her, and go out to the stadium and be like. It's me. Hi, I'm Taylor Swift. She wants to get off the stage and go to her dressing room and get in a robe and sit with Andrea and feed her cats and make TikToks. That's what she wants to do. She it's doesn't care about Taylor. She wants to be her. She wants to live inside her body. It's so weird. <laughs> like, that's so weird. And we all love Andrea. We all love and, Andrea. I have uh, never to be clear, thought like, that she is my mother behind it are very pure like i do believe the sentiment of it is nice like i i do like have i don't know i mean everybody has a different relationship you can't have it, someone you don't know be your mother figure and also taylor's mom andrea swift we love her we know her she's a legend she's actually very like not present we only know about her because we dig and because she picks us to meet her we don't know much about andrea we don't even have that much footage of her talking or like her being on the record saying anything so it's very weird that that would you would develop a parasocial relationship of to the extent of she feels like a replacement mother for you that we have like maximum five minutes of footage of her speaking how can you how can you develop a connection to that it's, it's like getting connected I mean, to it's a just plant. strange. This it's plant really, is my really mother strange. figure. It can't be. It and can't and be. it's like, I mean, uh, it blows my mind that this isn't the moment that she popped up onto my radar. Of it, or anybody mm. I fucking knew. I mean, I didn't know nothing of this. I mean, to be fair, I mind my business. Am I sitting here doing <laughs> a deep dive on a stranger? Yes. I am the bone collector. But mm -hmm. I, I... Today. Who, what about, I can't believe I did not hear about this. How are people not talking about? She said shit about it. She said, I mean, it's just so weird. It's so creepy. Nobody else it's thinks so this is weird. Creepy. Does anybody else think this is weird? Like that's weird. What was that, James? What James? What was that? What was that? <laughs> and then she just goes on about her day. <laughs> but Girly. anyway. That is not, uh, in spite of all this fanfare, that is not when I heard about Ashley Legion. It, it's so crazy because this was, a, she only started getting like really, really big in the past few months because of Midnight. She was in New York City for the release of Midnight. Um, that's when yeah. the league revealed itself to me. That is when I discovered the league. <laughs> 
So the, the I saw video, a video of someone. Yeah, the, the, okay, yes. so that that video. There's a video yeah. of a fan meeting Ashley on the street. Ashley is. I cannot express to you how much she is walking around New York City, begging, begging someone to stop her and be like, "Are you Taylor Swift?" She is catfishing. She is literally walking around, looking people in the eye, going, "We are never coming back together." <laughs> Shake it off, you guys. Hello, Anti Hero. Heard that song? She is literally, she's literally being psychotic. <laughs> and she's dressed in like Taylor Candid outfit. That's her thing, like Taylor <laughs> every day. She's wearing a plaid jacket, red lip, hair all done. And this guy comes up to her, shaking and crying, and says, Oh my God, Taylor. Now, my question for you, Madeline, is this video. I think that the person who is crying and shaking and thinking that it's Taylor is trolling her and is pretending to think that she's Taylor when in fact she is not. Is that the case? Does Ashley know that that's the case? She, she has a pinned on her TikTok. She's got she's, a pin there. She wants everyone to see it. She's spoken about it. She, the way that she speaks about it is that she was taken completely off guard and she was concerned. Oh, I'm not Taylor. No, it's I, I'm Ashley. No, 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 no. no. Oh my God, no. Then, How could you ever think that? Like, no, I would hate to be mistaken like, for Taylor. No, 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 no. I'm kidding. I'm Lies. kidding. You know, I'm not crying at all. Like, I'm kidding. It's a joke. And she was like, well, it's not very funny. It's like, oh. and is that in the video? No, no, that was her. That was her response to it. Like a, an, an interviewer asked her, "What happened?" And that, and she said, "I didn't really find it very funny. It wasn't really a joke." But I guess well, of course pinned. it wasn't a joke because you don't pinned. think it's funny when people don't think that you look like Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it, it's crazy. Just, That's not a joke to you. It's serious. That's your life. Funny. She thinks that it is when you don't think she looks mm. like Taylor. It is not mm -mm. a laughing matter, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -mm. It is She's not funny to her. Pissed. This is. I have seen this video hundreds of times. It has come up. It. it you know, it, once the news cycles pick up some dumb little story like that, it just gets repeated and repeated and repeated. Forever. Isn't this great? This girl looks just like Taylor. Here's this crazy fan. That's why she has a million followers. Taylor. Right, I mean, because normal just people were reeled right. in. Normal people who had no idea, they didn't know, they didn't know that she was a crazy fucking weirdo. They just saw, oh, this girl kind of looks like Taylor. That's kind of funny. I'll just follow out of morbid curiosity. Not even that. Just, oh, that's kind of funny. I'll, 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 I'll sign up. Oh, they didn't know. They didn't, they know, didn't know what they were signing up for. Which brings me to part three, which is entitled. The archaeological dig and the bones I dug up. Yes, there were many. So, mm. when you become... Are these the receipts? Men. Would you call these the oh, receipts? Oh, I'm, 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 you know, I, 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 I'm doing my taxes. I am collecting mm. all the receipts from the year. I'm gathering them up, and I'm presenting them to the IRS. So, <laughs> when you become massive and you get a million followers on TikTok, people are going to find things out about you. This is no surprise. Mm -hmm. When your big mm -hmm. thing is that you allegedly look just like Taylor Swift, it is no surprise that the haters may gather and try to mm -hmm. get you for something. But it's funny to me how many of the things that are really truly the bones in Ashley's closet have remained hidden until this entire but, but you found them. debacle. I'm an adventurer. I'm Indiana Jones. <laughs> I was in the deepest dig site of my life. Digging you were getting your, you were getting up. your lasso. You were mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. to different rocks. Mm -hmm. You were, you were parkouring all mm -hmm. over the place. You were getting inside Stop. the little crevices and pulling out the bones that've been hidden from you. Mm -hmm. The first bone that I picked up was that she currently works at Target. Now this confused me. Okay, currently, currently, <laughs> now currently, she currently is a Target employee and this remember she moved to nashville to follow her dreams of being a trauma nurse and i said multiple times this was her goal in life this is what she wanted to do with her life walking away from that to do acting i mean sure lots of people flop on genuine careers <laughs> to, to go pursue a pipe dream that, but yeah. walking away from that to be a cashier at target i found pretty interesting and i started uncovering the rest of the skeleton is it a Tyrannosaurus? Is it a Triceratops? Is it a species well, what we haven't find? discovered yet? You have in, me on the edge of my seat. In her early TikToks, there's lots of references to her being a nurse. She was a crisis nurse around the pandemic, like the height of it, and crisis nurses like travel around. 
She and she posted on TikTok a TikTok that should really be viewed, but describing it, we'll just have to do. It's from October 2021, and the caption is, quote, come take a tour with me before we get our refugees. And it shows cots and buses and the whole nine, what you would expect as the song Yellow by Coldplay plays in the background. Now, these are refugees I... from Afghanistan. These are these are refugees from Afghanistan. And this is what she's one Look of the at first the stars. people Look the that these refugees from Afghanistan met when they come to the United States. And she's posting this shit on her TikTok account. Yellow by they Coldplay. Came... Yellow they came by to Coldplay. the United States from a war-torn country. They met Ashley and said, I need a return ticket. James, <laughs> what was that? I've got to go. <laughs> I literally have to leave. I'm hoping there were no people in the TikTok, right? Like no. there, there weren't but any she's done actual weird refugees. Shit. Uh, it doesn't surprise just wait. me. <laughs> just wait. It really doesn't surprise me. Um, she was out there nursing. I, I was in their TikTok. She's doing her stuff. And then suddenly... Mm-hmm there were no more direct references to her being a nurse. Hmm. So now call the TikTok has been mined. She, people delete shit all the time for, for reasons that aren't even nefarious. She just deleted stuff. For all I know, maybe she just deleted a bunch of nurse stuff. I don't know why, but all of a sudden she stopped being a nurse. There were no more nurse content, no more yellow by Coldplay. It was gone. You know, thank you. Finished. But, Over. Um, <clears throat> she says, she explains, she took a mental break from nursing to pursue her dreams of acting. She says that she studied for years to become a trauma nurse. She got to Nashville. She became a trauma nurse. And then COVID hit and it destroyed her mentally. And she lost Fair her enough. nursing sparkle. And now Fair enough. she is applying to be a cashier at Target. And in this TikTok, she's wearing a red shirt. Can't make this up. She says in, a, in another TikTok... She became a travel crisis nurse at the start of COVID, like I said. And as a travel crisis nurse, she was making five to $10,000 per week to do this nursing job. And it killed her. And now she's making $15 an hour as a cashier at Target. And she's just happy as a clam. Walking away from that kind of money. Because remember, money isn't everything. According oh, to the of week. course. According Being to the wig. everything. But to <laughs> be a truly good everything. wig, to be a wig... That makes the girlies turn their heads. You need to have some coinage. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. Like, I, I do, I mean. You got to buy the one-to-one reproductions of it, her fucking costumes. I, That's not cheap. Yeah. That's not cheap. I completely could believe, like, I had to take a mental break. Like, it was too much. Like, yes. absolutely. I believe that 100%. But now, why are we working at Target? <laughs> I don't mm, get Why uh, are we uh, working uh, at Target? Uh, I mean, you can do other things aside from crisis nurse. You can do other things aside from trauma nurse. Like, I, when you have a nursing degree, you don't just have, they don't just send you off on the road and that's all you can do. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't understand. I mean, she's making so much money. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So to what's me. your, what's your hypothesis here? Where is this? Well, here's this why I am telling you all this. This is why I was hammering and brushing and discovering mm-hmm. and the whole skeleton mm-hmm. was starting to take form. And I was beginning to find little scraps, little pieces of people saying... Morsels? She was indeed fired from being a nurse because Ooh. she refused to get the poke. She refused to get vaccinated I against COVID-19. See. Now, ladies, quit it. Many such cases. K- what? <laughs> Many <laughs> such cases, sadly. Quitting your 10K a week job to work at Target, such colors do not run. Getting mm. fired from your 10K a week fucking nursing job because you won't get the COVID vaccine and working at Target. See, now that kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> that, that's where you wind up when you don't get the poke. You have to go well, work at Target. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yep. Seems like it. I, I, obviously, allegedly, I this. allegedly, nobody, allegedly. Nobody can prove that she doesn't have the. I don't. I can't prove no. that. This is, and but, also, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It really, truly doesn't matter. But you know, it's an interesting detail to the story of the lies because it pertains to the rest of the bones that I dug up. Now, somebody being act, anti-vaccination, like it, it actually, truly is like something that you know a lot of people need to realize is that idiocy uh, is a disease. And it spreads mm-hmm. no matter what you call yourself on your little voting card. Like, it really does. You can be a fucking idiot no matter what. 
Um, yeah. Non-denominational idiocy. People said, not only is she anti-vax, anti-mask, she is blue lives matter, mm. make America great again, Trump. No, nope. She was a Trumper. See, that's just a sign of mental instability. This it is. is just hearsay. But it's just hearsay. That's the thing. People and that's bipartisan. <laughs> approaching me, and they said, I swear, people at the dig site, they were at the dig site with me, saying, I swear, I had... In 2020, in early 2020, when she first joined TikTok, I saw with my own two eyeballs her saying, go Trump, her saying, fuck the vaccine, her saying, I back the blue. I saw it with my own eyes. It blew my mind that this could have happened and nobody had any receipts. Nobody had any- Nothing. Proof. No evidence. Who, who runs her PR? Because that stupider, bigger people than her, namely Dylan O'Brien's girlfriend, didn't have somebody doing all this for them. Mm. Who did this cleanup for her? They must be a fucking genius. Because I had yeah. to go into the depths to find even anything mentioning it. I found a TikTok on her account. Oh, you did? I did. That was still Here's up. Here's what it said. This is, this is her, like, this is the only one that is, like, anything of her that I could find. I mean, I didn't, like, view every single one from front to back. But this is the one that I found that addresses these concerns. Um, uh, a bunch of people started asking her where she was on January 6th, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> it set me down <laughs> river. I thought that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. This is an Many example of Many people yeah. were subjected to that. And it's funny. It's funny. It cracks me up. Where was she? She answers mm -hmm. the question. And she calls it Ooh. January 6th, 2020, which fucking sends me because any dumbass <laughs> would know that doesn't make any sense. It was January 6th, 2021. You have a fucking meatball. Like, who is this dumbass? But anyway, people were asking her, where are you on January 6th? And you have to see this to believe it. Like, you, you should go find this, but I will describe it to you. She says, where was I on January 6th? Offended. Uh, she could have simply said, hey, on January 6th, I was a crisis nurse. I was in full PPE in the ICU. Thanks, asshole. She could have just said that. But she took oh, it no. a step further. <laughs> she said, <laughs> I was in full PPE in the ICU having to, this is her exact words, stop my patient from trying to unalive themselves multiple times. And she shared a picture of herself from that day. From the day her patient was in the ICU trying to, trying to unalive. unalive themselves. Here's what I gathered from this. This, to me, is a massive deflection from the initial question, where the fuck were you on January 6th? I'm a great person. I'm a nurse. I saved someone from unaliving themselves. How dare you accuse me of having been at the Capitol on that fateful day? Hmm. What kind well, of Well, she didn't want to answer that? the question, because the question isn't... Re the question is not really, where were you on January 6th? The question the is... The question is, are you insane? Are you a crazy person? Are Let's you know. And somebody... she said... She said, look over here. Look over, look here. over here. I'm a nurse. I save lives. What I was save that? lives. I'm a nurse. What was that? I'm a nurse. <laughs> I could possibly be thing. crazy. This is another deflection. Okay. Somebody asked her, what are your thoughts on the current political climate? A pretty direct question. She yeah. said this, quote, I am terrible at keeping up with politics. Can you elaborate mm. on any issues going on? I live under a rock and TikTok, LOL. Can you elaborate on any issues? Can you elaborate? on any issues going on from 2020 to 2022 <laughs> the world was going from you... one incident without her, without her historical precedence to the next the world was literally <laughs> melting elaborate? down well also she was on tiktok and tiktok is where a lot of these conversations happen a lot of people talk about the various things that happen on tiktok so my question is can you really be that living under a rock? Is that really possible? You are so disconnected. No. You know, I would believe if she lived in a cabin and she didn't have internet access, that is, if you're off the grid, sure, but you are terminally online. There's no way that she didn't at least at one point encounter something about whatever was going on in the world. So... I, th again, with the Ashley lies are such bad lies because she just 
Well, she's she an, tells she, the, she doesn't need to tell these stupid lies. It doesn't need to be like that. Just don't answer the question. Don't answer well, the question. Here is something else that I discovered. And unfortunately, my bones on this are very small because mm -hmm. all evidence of this having occurred has been like wiped from the face of the internet. I only read stories about it. Apparently, she got in this scuffle with another girly on TikTok who kind of has a Taylor Swift you know, look to her. Um, her name is Elena. It's spelled E-L-A-Y-N-A. -A. If you search Elena Taylor Swift on TikTok, it just comes right up. I can't remember her handle. Um, but she, Ashley and this girl got in a scuffle um, because Elena, like, uh, accused Ashley of being, you know, a Trumper. Um, and so Ashley, like, went on live to, like, you know, live, of course, of all things. So I can't access it. I can't view it. And, um... Pretty much to, like, say fuck you to this girl, essentially. Like, I don't... The, the story's very vague. But mm -hmm. I, I guess she was in it's her hearsay. live. And people... This is some of the funniest shit I've ever read. So somebody simply asked if Ashley is a Mormon. And Ashley blocked them. Uh, somebody, uh... Well, she lives said, in Utah now, right? That's part right, of the no, story. But she's she lives not in from Utah? Utah. I mean, yeah, she's, she lives in Utah. I mean, mm. yes, Utah is the land of the Mormons, but just somebody living in Utah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a fair question. question. If it's, you don't know Ashley question. and you it's, see she lives in question. Utah... I don't know why it made her so fucking mad. Anything that's, like, even slightly negative, like, people people would be like, well, what's your, what's your political affiliation? And they would get blocked. You know, any anything mm. that actually have her answer an actual fucking... Her husband was there, too. Did I mention that? She was on live with her husband. Mm. Who's like a jackass. Anyway. Her husband looks like a school shooter. Let's just here's, say what it is. Here's what, here's what they said. They said, politics don't matter. Of course they don't matter to you. You're white. Mm. Like, I don't... I, I don't... <laughs> like, you're white. You're straight. You live in Utah. Of course they don't matter to... Like, I don't... It's just like... You don't care? Mm. Um, but... What's funny about this Elena and Ashley thing is that apparently Ashley hired a lawyer to sue Elena. I can't prove this. This is what's been told to me. Because apparently um, Ashley said we that We should really Elena reach was, out to Elena for comment. Uh, uh, Elena looked like like she was trying to look like Ashley. So Ashley tried to sue her. <laughs> That's because so people were Because if you're trying to look like Ashley, them, you're trying to look like it, Taylor. It pissed her off. Like, it made her mad that people were saying, oh, oh I can't tell the difference between the two. And that, like, made her really mad. I wonder if I she's going to sue us. The Bones. Like, she had an entire blog post about it, and she deleted all of it. Mm. I don't know why. I do not know why. Mm. She probably sent a cease and desist, well, which we won't fall for, so don't bother sending it, because we are. these are all allegations, and you are a public figure. So uh, I kinda, let's start there. I would like to say this off the record. Uh... Elena's no, like you a can't. Taylor. Say it later. I just said it. <laughs> now I, just said it. Said it. Now said I just said it. I just said it. All right. It. Well, we won't. We won't have a conversation about that. But like, yeah. All right. Noted. Noted. Well, it's just if you were wondering why I didn't like say, "Hey, we do you know Ashley?" Yeah. Because I mean, there was well, more layers to it than I really wanted to engage. Reliable narrator, perhaps not. Perhaps not. Delusional, yes. <laughs> But, you know, this is a delusional episode. We're delusional. But not like yeah. this. Not in this way. Um, <laughs> this. In any event. In any event, lots of claims. Mm -hmm. Lots of claims. I can't, I, you know, the bones weren't coming to me. I was simply finding the fragments. Um, there's a video <laughs> on her TikTok, bless you, that directly Thank addresses you. <laughs> these claims. This is the only one that I could find. Um, and I'd say addresses the claims is being kind of generous. So it is from the 4th mm -hmm. of October, 2022. She says oh, she recent. is not anti-vaccination, as people have accused her of. She simply had a negative mm -hmm. reaction to the flu vaccine and Gardasol. That's what she said. Um, she says hey. that she is vaccinated against COVID-19. She also said anti-mask claims were ridiculous because she's a nurse and has been masking for a very long time. And last but not least, she says that she is an independent and doesn't like either political party. Now, I don't know many, how many of you would know this about American politics, but usually when someone says they're an independent, it's a cop out for saying what you really think or believe, which is things that you don't want people to know that you think or believe. And what's really to interesting me, to me is that she won't just say, I don't, 
Just say yeah, they're not a trumper. Say. That's say all you gotta say. Yeah. I don't like Trump. Just That's say. all you gotta say. They're They'll like, lay she off. She will not say off. it. She's never said that. She has never well, then, said. Well I'm then, not a what is she? She's making it worse for herself by not yeah. just being clear. And you know what? Taylor wouldn't like that. Taylor is a hardcore card carrying lib. If she didn't hear Ashley say, I love the Democrats, she would be like, I hate you. And she already hates her. Which is a prong. Like, this is a prong <laughs> to like something more sinister being afoot. Um, I, I tried to find any evidence of this anti vax uh, Make America Great Again stuff having been true. Uh, first of all, it makes sense. Like, I don't know, you look at her and you say, yeah, you kind of look like somebody who might, you know, be, be, be at the parts. Capitol on January. You kind of, <laughs> I don't, like, I'm not, no offense, but like, she kind of does. And like, this well, story she's, she's crazy. of her she quitting is crazy. her job, her literal dream job to work at Target, doesn't it's add not, up. It's just not clicking. Um, but mm. I dug. I was like, I, I, sorry, I was really, really determined to find evidence because I don't like saying stuff if I don't have proof. Um, but I found it. I did. It's not oh, much. You found it. But to me, it's enough. To me, it's enough. Um, I found I, mm -hmm. this is. I, it's crazy to me how much I dug to find this, and I finally discovered it. I happened upon it because somebody replied it to me on Twitter. After all my hard work, it's just given to me. I was like, "Thank God." <laughs> so, um, I, 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 here's what I found. So there's one post where, you know, I don't I don't know what, the, what video it was on. You know, who knows? But it was a comment, and somebody commented to Ashley. It said, "You should be holding a Trump sign." And her response is a red square and the rock on emoji, which pretty much means, you know, rock on red party. Oh, you know, I mean, she, I mean, Republican. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, you can't really, you know, d decode that any other way. And then there's another mm -hmm. one um, where it's like a screen cap of her old bio. Um, and it says she's a mom, she's a nurse, and she backs the True, true. To me, this is enough. Like, this, mm. this little image, like that, mega. Like, obviously mega. Like, uh, there's no other way to, nobody, nobody. And nobody backs, says, the, I blue back the blue means supports the police, right? That's what it means. Right, yes, yeah. that's Just what that means. for our listeners um, who maybe don't know. And, I mean, uh, we could go on and on, but why does back the blue mean that you're mm -hmm. a MAGA Republican? But, yeah, that's, we won't get into that, that, but it's this. You should just Google that. This is, because that, this, this fleshes out the character traits of Ashley. I also don't like to, like, define people by their politics. I don't think it's a productive or an interesting way to go about things. But in this specific scenario, um, it says something about who Ashley is and what kind of approach she's bringing to being a Taylor Swift lookalike <laughs> to give these bones to the people. It shows you that she lives in a world that is not a real world and that she perhaps is not a great person. <laughs> I mean, let's just, let's call it what it is. Well, and it, and it, it lends into the other thing that lots and lots of people have said about her and that one might argue there's lots of proof of, which is that she mm -hmm. is not a Miss OG Swifty since 06, you saved my life. Before 2020, before folklore, people say, people repeat, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. repeat and repeat and repeat. She used to say she was annoyed by the fact that time to time, people would say that she looked like Taylor Swift because she hated Taylor Swift. Which makes sense if you're a MAGA, because uh, you know, as we know, Miss <coughs> Swift is, 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 is a loud liberal in the political sphere. I mean, she made Miss Americana mm -hmm. think what you want about it. It's not exactly the, you know, arc de triomphe of political mm -hmm. commentary. But she does say very clearly things about Trump mm -hmm. in that documentary that are unsavory. So um, it just kind of goes hand in hand. But the, the colors, uh, the colors just aren't running to me. Like, uh, she had no fucking internet presence before 2020, in spite of being a massive Swifty. In spite of looking just like her and loving that. Mm -hmm. In spite of a lot of fucking things, it makes no sense. There is no evidence. Well, where no are the proof. pictures of her at the exactly. Speak Now tour? She I has those. no videos or pictures of herself going Where's to the merch? She doesn't Where's have all merch? embarrassing pictures of herself with Taylor. Ticket that stops? I kept every those. Every other fucking original Swifty I have ever met has at least a couple of these things, but she does have excuses for this. Um, mm -hmm. She had, like, a really rough time at home and wasn't allowed to go to shows. 
Um, her parents were, okay. I guess, like really controlling, and they didn't let her go to concerts. Um, but she doesn't have you pictures. didn't write an iHeart. You didn't write an iHeart question mark on the well, back of your hand and take a selfie with it. But you exactly, didn't put a well, thirteen and take a picture. She doesn't have pictures of herself from that time in her life because she left home really young. Hmm. Um. It I don't does, know if I believe that, It still doesn't actually. add up. I don't know like, if I you, believe it. She said, Taylor Swift raised her and Andrea is her surrogate fucking mother, and you don't have a picture of yourself in a fearless t-shirt? I find that strange. She has one You don't have a love, love, love bracelet? That she wheels out. One picture. And that's the only one. It's like, it doesn't what is even it? matter to me. Doesn't what is the picture? It's like, it doesn't even matter to me. Like, none of this matters to me. Because, I mean, it's not about the material things. It's not about being able to go to shows. There would... She's my age. Like, the, I know exactly every social thing that was, I know when smartphones came out. I know when pictures, it's yep. like, you but have couldn't nothing. she show us you a screenshot nothing. of a tweet, a tweet from 2011 saying, right. I love Taylor Swift? That would suffice, but that doesn't exist. What is the evidence that she trots out? What is this picture you're talking about? I'm talking, the single picture I told you about earlier, side by side. Remember? The one where she looks like Taylor? Oh, I thought the you meant she, she had a picture claimed. of her in merch or something. No, the only oh, picture like is a picture I told you about earlier. There's no merch. From her no youth. Proof that she's that's a it. Yeah, that's it. That's the only picture. And, mm. and it's like... Well, I had multiple people commenting on my TikTok saying that they had, with their own two eyes, seen her on live during the pandemic being like, I'm not that big a Swifty. Not I hate her, but like, I don't know that much about her. I like a couple of the folklore songs. And that would check out with our hypothesis, which is that she logged on to TikTok after folklore came out. She liked the beat. She was not a veteran Swifty. She did not have any prior obsession with Taylor. I'm sure she liked Taylor song here and there over the years. Uh, so say the 7 billion other people on this planet. She's kind of inescapable. But she... I would, I would really put money on this. She is not an OG Swifty. She's not even a Swifty pre-2020. I'm telling you. We know. We know. We've been around. I have, we have literally been chronicling the fandom since it began its online iteration. We would have encountered some form of Ashley, especially if she was this Taylor Swift lookalike. Because the Taylor Swift lookalikes were the superstars. They rose to the top, no matter how annoying they were, because everybody hated them and everybody loved to throw stones at them. And we would have been throwing stones a lot earlier had Ashley been doing this nonsense before TikTok. <clears throat> well, it's it that this is like the entire crux of the Mish a the the Ashley thing. Like this is like this is the entire backstory. Mm -hmm. She is an alleged Taylor Swift lookalike who came out of literal nowhere in 2020 and started lying about being an OG Swifty <laughs> and being about a run of the mill liberal. <laughs> I think just to fit in and appeal to Generation Z and also the Swifties of her age group, like myself, she literally went incognito and changed a lot of things about herself legitimately or just for pretend. I don't know. Who knows if she even actually likes Taylor that much, even at this I point. I don't know. I think it's mostly You know, to you know what she did? She, yes, she realized. I think she... Again, we talked about how she is an, a chronic attention seeker. I think that by she wants attention by any means she necessary. She wants to be a this model. This is the most attention. Well, this is the most attention she's ever got in her life for accidentally, I mean, according to her, for accidentally looking like Taylor. So if you are a chronic attention seeker, you've wanted to be an actor forever. Nobody cares about you. Nobody wants to follow you on social media. And all of a sudden, this is getting you so many clicks. It's getting you so many likes, so many comments. I would pretend to like someone too. I also would pretend that I had been around since the beginning because it sounds better. It's a better story. As an entertainer, she's like, okay, it sounds better if I've been a Taylor Swift fan forever. Then people can't accuse me of copying her because I've always looked like her. Like if you, if you start to connect the lies, it all leads back to she wants to be famous. Well, she wants, and she to wants get... people to think that she's famous for being herself. When, if we're all being honest, if we sat Ashley down and you hooked her up to a polygraph, she herself would say, I deliberately put on this Taylor act because it makes me famous. That's why I do it. Period. Well, she, she wanted to gain notoriety. That's literally, she wanted to get her foot in the door. That's literally it. Mission that is my That is my belief after everything that I researched. She mm -hmm. wants to gain notoriety and she wants to get her foot in the door to be an actress or a model. And she wants to get invited to things. Many well, that is a great things. segue. Events. Great segue into the final part, which is noon roast, noon on, roast a Sunday, on a Sunday. The reup. Re <laughs> okay, this so shit here it is. is crazy. Here it is. Ashley 
I think has single-handedly torpedoed any chance of being a legitimate influencer after what she has done in this scenario. And it's just so ridiculous to me that she would work this hard like, it's hard work <laughs> doing all these TikToks, telling all these lies. That takes a lot of energy and time. It, it baffles me that she could fumble the bag so incredibly, like, so badly over something that didn't have to be like this. It didn't have to be this way. But she has essentially made herself radioactive, toxic waste to any PR company. And we've cross-checked this with professionals in the industry. <laughs> Ashley is... <laughs> persona non grata in the influencer space. And it didn't, when I think about Ashley, she could have actually had a successful career being a Taylor lookalike had she not done all this other nonsense, had she not done the lies, had she not done the, I want to be very controlling over how I'm perceived. If she had just been like, I'm a Taylor Swift lookalike, she could get the bag. She could be an influencer <laughs> if she wanted to be. She could, if she was just honest, but no Oh, no, 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 no. Instead, she was invited to the Grammys. She got uninvited to the Grammys. And she had a, let's call it what it is, Karen-esque meltdown over the fact that she could no longer attend. And the way that she handled it all ruined her career. <laughs> it did. Literally. Like, it's not, it's not even being, ex like, an exaggeration. Like, she literally fumbled the bag. She clowned. And uh, I've never seen Ronald she McDonald clown just as hard as this. Like, Ronald McDonald came out. <laughs> and I think Ronald McDonald she... around his day. She slipped on a banana peel, smashed her head open, and went into a coma. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I have the entire story from beginning to end. And I think it is hilarious. I think that it needs to be told. It's show-stopping. I think it's that... It's never been done it before. needs to be dissected. So... Uh -huh. I and we lost discovered to say. that No, It's Ashley was attending the Grammys when I was at the Men in Music Business Conference. I was literally <laughs> in the middle of the conference. And I happened to scroll Twitter and see someone saying that she got invited to the Grammys. My initial response to this was... Was to tell maybe me... I, maybe I believe that she's going, but I don't believe that she got invited. <laughs> like, what possible business yeah. would the Grammys She's have a seat inviting? filler. She's got a... Yeah, she just, bought just, a ticket. Something. Something, something, something. The, the colors didn't run. I went on TikTok because I was like, I gotta see what the fuck. The wig posted a TikTok with a cat <laughs> who was named after a Grey's Anatomy character, uh, where she informed us that she had incredible news. She said, we've been dying to tell you, yes, it's official. I have partnered with the Grammys. Yes, the 2023 Grammys. I am headed there this Sunday. And she said I she am was their most partner. excited to see Taylor to Swift. <laughs> she was going to walk the red carpet. She was really yep. happy enough. She said, I'm going to walk the red carpet. She's going to walk the red carpet. She went out and bought a gown. She went out and bought a gown. <laughs> she was teasing the gown. Just a bag. This is what I'm going to wear. Oh, I'm unzipping it, but I'm not going to show you. That's if anybody cares. Like, anybody You're going to have to wait till I fucking, see it on the red carpet. You fucking prom no girl, one. 2003 dress. No offense. What's super funny about this dress is that it is eerily similar to the, to the dress that Taylor wore to her own first Grammys. I can't make stuff like this. Which ah, Ashley. Ashley posted a TikTok of her being like, I love this dress right before she went and bought this dress, by the way. It's delusional. And the level of delusion that you <laughs> have to have, who, who wants you on the red carpet? Who are you? No one. We don't know. Who You're are you? You're Mrs. Potato no. Head that keeps changing its <laughs> accessories. Nobody knows who you and are. And also, you can I just say that at the Grammys, I didn't see any influencers on the carpet. I didn't see them. No. I mean, so I I'm like, who to told fair, like, Also, in all her correspondence, in all her correspondence with everybody involved in this, there was not one mention other than from her about walking the red carpet. Uh, maybe I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. She had many phone calls. Maybe someone said something to her about it on the phone, but they continuously rejected her having someone accompany her on the red carpet. And I don't think they ever mentioned specifically, you will be on the red carpet. I think they were talking about the show. You can have one of our people come with you. I like. I'm. I'm just so perplexed about mm, exactly. The like no, she of wasn't gonna be that. like. There's. Um, she wasn't gonna like in a... her mind. She was gonna be on the same carpet that Taylor Swift was on, and that is beyond delusional because actual celebrities can't get onto the same that that main red carpet where all of the big celebs go. There are a lot of them in this one space. They don't have time to get fucking. Mrs. Potato Head 
in her 2003 mall dress onto the red carpet. She would she would go there, and the photographers wouldn't click. They'd be like, <laughs> "I got to save my role." There would be crickets. I got to save the film. <laughs> they would literally, and she'd be like, "She'd be like, it's Ashley." They'd be like, "We don't fucking care, bitch. Boo, move." We got to take a picture of Doja Cat. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? She believed in her heart of hearts. Oh my God! I'm going to meet Taylor. Here we go, everybody. I, oh, she she's she in, thought she's she thought Patty. I'm gonna. She was like, I'm gonna be on the red carpet, and they're gonna have Taylor right behind me, and Taylor's gonna see me and go, Oh my God, Ashley! Ashley and we're gonna stand together on the red oh carpet and take pictures. She thought that. She thought that. She packed her bags. <laughs> <laughs> she got into the car. She went to the airport. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, it's she really got on the plane. happening. So the next TikTok we get from the wig is, first of all, <laughs> filmed in her kitchen in Utah. And I just want to clear this up. So initially, I was like, how the fuck did you get from L.A. to Utah in like seven hours? But she apparently she, already this had This was that. pre-recorded stuff, right? It was pre-recorded, which makes yeah, complete I that for and total too. sense. For mm-hmm. a content creator, like it's not that big of a deal. It was just, it was, we it do was it. very odd at first, but that just to yeah. clear that up. Um, but here's what it said: um, Her biggest fear is quote getting invited to the Grammys as one of the very few chosen to walk the red carpet two weeks prior, <laughs> being told to make a video to say I am quote partnering with the Grammys by a deadline date specified in the contract, spending two k on dress, apparel, lodging, travel, childcare, etc. Landing in LA and being told as I am taxi that there are no more tickets and I will not be able to attend. Now here's what I said. So you you just made that up. So you just made that entire <laughs> thing up. I couldn't that, figure out why would the Grammys want anything to do with I was her? So they don't need confused. TikTok promo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She sort of looks like Taylor also, Swift. And who would invite a look like mo- to walk the fucking Also for a moment. Car? The Grammys are the Grammys are a big event, right? Okay, there are a lot of famous people here. A lot of people are going to be tuned to the fuck in. If they're going to be inviting influencers, they want Addison Rae. They want Dixie D'Amelio. They want people with hundreds of millions of followers. Ashley is a small a fucking, fucking fry compared to any that? other influencer. A literal small she has fry. A million, she has a million TikTok followers and 20,000 Instagram followers. Do the math. And yet, and yet. <laughs> do the math. She, she, she never can give the Grammys it. approximately she nothing. No. She, flew to she LA. was like, they need me on the red carpet. I have to be there. They want my Ashleyness on the carpet. It didn't make any sense. I thought she made it up. <laughs> so did many other people. But here's what my second thought. She got scammed. I was like, yeah, yeah. Yep. I was like, she got scammed. Yeah, now, I want to tell you why this wasn't out of the realm of possibility because she has been scammed into believing that she was going to meet Taylor in the <laughs> past. This has happened before. <laughs> in the past, she exchanged, as she said, thousands of messages with a man who claimed that he could get Ashley to meet Taylor, and that was a scam. She has not yet told this entire story, but here's what she says: "Quote: I have a thousand plus receipts." And that is a big story time that I've had to recover from before I spoke out about it. I have thousands of messages from from this man stating I was going to meet her. I needed a year to process it all. No one knows. End quote. And the funniest thing about this is that she also jumped the gun and posted this shit on TikTok before anything was confirmed. Again, she posted a TikTok. When you realize you are meeting Tay and it is now on the calendar. It is on the calendar. But see, but see but was this is what I calendar. mean. This is what I mean. She sets herself up. She does it to herself. And this, I, I said this to Madeline, to me, this instance of her believing a random man could get her to meet Taylor shows to me that she knows fucking nothing she about Taylor subse- Swift. She is she susceptible to scams. She is the nothing knower. She knows nothing about. We, everybody in this world knows the only people that can connect you directly with Taylor Swift are it's a member of Taylor Nation who emails you from an email that says webmaster at taylorswift.com or a DM from their official account, Andrea Swift. And that's about it. Unless you personally know like one of her friends or like you somehow maybe through that avenue, maybe that way you get to meet her. But if a random man comes out of nowhere and is messaging you saying, I can get you to meet Taylor, you as a Swifty 
know that that's not true. So this proves to me again that Ashley's whole I've known Taylor Swift forever, I'm an OG Swifty is fake fucking news. <clears throat> It's fake news. Uh, it, the, I, I mean, it, sh- it shows a lot of things. She's not a Swifty OG, at least. Uh, you know, she, She's she not smart. She is gullible. You're not smart. Uh, <laughs> she is a silly goose. You know, on and on and on. <laughs> She's not a silly <laughs> rabbit. She's yeah. not my right hand arm man. Um, She's an idiot. Understandably, no matter what the truth is at this point, she is upset that thousands of people are essentially <laughs> accusing her of being a pathological liar. Um, and I'm sure she's also generally upset because she thought she was going to go to the fucking Grammys and walk the carpet <laughs> and in her Taylor. gown, and now she's not. Mm-hmm. And she's just in L.A. Dreams of meeting yep. Taylor completely thwarted, and she shiny said, dress. She logs on in she's plastic mad wrap. As hell. She is mad as hell. She she logs on and she says, "I have receipts." And she claims that she had a contract, and the contract is what blew my mind. Because how can there be a contract and you don't have a guaranteed fucking ticket? That was my initial thought. But she said um, it was not the Grammys. That personally, every her. receipt she proved made her look stupider and stupider. That's the thing. And like it wasn't evidence that was supported her being wronged. It supported ex- her being posing. a fucking right. numpty. So the third party that invited her to the Grammys is called Sweetie High. They have millions and millions of followers on TikTok. Um, they are a real they, PR agency. They, they I thought they were a scam at first. I was like, what's Sweetie High? No, they're real. They are a real influencer PR agency. They work with brands to recruit influencers to do their ad campaigns for them. And that includes event coverage. And event coverage is usually not a paid opportunity. You right. are you know, granted with the exposure of going to the event. But if you read, if Ashley had read the contract that she received... She would have noticed in the first, it's like, it's literally the first sentence says, basically, we can cancel you at any time and you can't do anything about it. it that's them's the rules. That's the lay of the land. They didn't mince their words. It was the first fucking sentence. And what's really funny about that and how clear it is, is that when she's first presenting this to people, to me, to, to the proles, the feasting on this bounteous turd, uh, she <laughs> presents it in a way that suggests that she was scammed. She says she mm-hmm. does not want this to happen to quote unquote other content creators. So she needs this to couldn't happen her, to anyone. Her else. brand, <laughs> this her <laughs> reputation. <laughs> so okay, like, yeah. Uh, my reputation. Well, later on, it was my reputation in Hollywood, which really gagged me. But we'll save um, that for later. She also, I just need to say this, like, this needs to be known. Like, this is one of the in, most insane things I've ever seen anybody say. So in the comment section on this TikTok, she uh, says, you know, she's she's so devastated by not being able to go to the Grammys and meet Taylor that she likened it to the feeling she had when she, quote, found out her best friend died in a car accident. On the now, news. Now, on the news. Just, That's the important I, part. You know, on the news. She was like, why would you find that on the news? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because it was another lookalike. It was an Ariana Grande lookalike who was also why super famous. Got into a car news? accident. I mean, it's it's crazy. But if you read the contract, it's very clear up front. Up there, very upfront and clear. And also what has since materialized is they never fucking signed the contract. Sweetie High um, never signed the contract. Well, she yeah, signed well, it. They so, never signed it. So it's like, you well, didn't just, even no, have... It matters. Exactly. It's not binding. You, you didn't no, even have an agreement it. in place. You didn't well, have an agreement. Here's, here's the thing of it. Now, I want to get into why exactly perhaps this contract was not signed. Uh, so let's get into it. So she what, claims... Because she was being fucking crazy. She was being crazy. So she, she gets the she, contract. She claims... I think this is hindsight bias. But she claims that she was very wary about all of this from the beginning. It's like, no, you weren't. You thought some random no. dude on she, Twitter she was, was screaming gonna, and crying was and shaking. going to take you to see Taylor Swift. I, <laughs> so she said, She thought oh, she was going to get a Grammy. Flags. Lifetime Achievement Award. Red fucking <laughs> flags. So um, she, well, so she know, gets, gets the contract. The contract, the contract and has. And she, she, uh, <laughs> she sent back a second contract. So she read the contract. She didn't like the way it looked. She gave it to her publicist, which is an interesting person to give a contract to. Where's the counsel? Where's mm-hmm. the legal counsel? First, Where's the lawyer? <laughs> first of all, Where's your yeah, lawyer? your agent. Also, your agent handles your contracts, not your publicist. Your publicist may talk with the PR people about, like, 
what you're going to do. But the publicist does not write you a deal memo to send in a contract. And I'd also like to point out that a deal memo comes before a contract. So she fucked that up, fumbled the bag on that. But she decides that the original contract is not to her liking. Well, she was you obsessed. Think, if it was me, if it was me, <laughs> I would look at that contract and I would say, the problem that I would take umbrage with would be that first line that you can cancel me at a moment's notice and I have to pay for all my travel, lodging, everything myself. They weren't offering to pay her a dime. No, they, they weren't even offering to let her expense anything. They said, you know, if you're in the area, you can come. And usually what happens with these influencer campaigns is that they're not really handpicking. This is her other thing. I was one of the chosen few. What they do is they cast a wide net for influencers. They have maybe a hundred people. They send them all the same email, same contract. And the reason why that clause is in there is because they invite so many people and they only get a certain number of tickets. So they invite a lot of people hoping that they get a certain amount and everyone can go, but they have backups, insurance people. My guess would be that Ashley didn't make the fucking cut because she's not that big of a deal. And also she was being a pain in the ass throughout the entire con contract she negotiation. She was completely, like, all of these things are legitimate, like, everything that Zach just said. These are legitimate concerns to have. Her concern was she <laughs> wanted her husband to walk the red carpet with her. That was, that, this that, is what she was going that to was the, that That's for. what she wanted in that's the contract. That's what she wanted. And it's like, well, th that's not, as a PR person, I would be like, why that would never be in a contract that's just like an oral agreement and it's also like not that's not a binding part of the service you're providing she basically was kind of like i can't walk the red carpet without anyone else my response to that as the pr person would have been like okay so don't come <laughs> which is basically what they did <laughs> it, this is now this is the perhaps to me the strangest part of this deal memo that she sent back she told us what she put in the deal memo and she says that the deal memo was about protecting herself. And this is an exact quote. And her, to her brand. Ensure her that no press, no photos, no videos would have Taylor Swift's name on them. So essentially, the pictures of her wouldn't be mistaken for pictures of Taylor. She felt that need to be put into writing and signed. And Sweetie High wouldn't <laughs> sign it. And she's kind of making it seem like that's why they wouldn't sign it. Like as though they wanted to call her Taylor in photos. Why would they want to do that? Well, this Why is the thing as well. She's delusional. She's, she's, she's at the same time. So she's very narcissistic, right? She thinks that there's some secret conspiracy theory that they wanted her to show up on the red carpet and act like Taylor Swift. But you know what in actuality the situation is, is that it's exactly what I said earlier. They cast their net really wide. They invited a bunch of influencers. Ashley didn't make the <clears> cut. It had nothing to do with her being or not being a Taylor Swift influencer, but also she wasn't invited because she is a Taylor Swift. They didn't want her to come on the red carpet and impersonate Taylor Swift. They didn't care if she came or not. They cast the net wide. They sent the invitation out to a bunch of people. So she's being delusional in that respect. But also the other part of it is your whole thing is being Taylor Swift. And this just feeds into the delusion that anybody fucking cares about you or what you do when you are not pretending to be Taylor Swift. Because that's the only reason why you have a million followers and are getting invited to attend the Grammys and walk the red carpet in the first place. You would think she wouldn't take umbrage with that because she would know that that's her unique skill. Uh, in addition to that being her only skill, like she is a Swifty. <laughs> she looks like Taylor Swift, whatever. Um, the specific reason that Sweetie High wanted her to come, like in the emails that were sent, I was reading them. Um, they want they wanted her to quote unquote Swifty it up for them, and their main hmm. goal that Sweetie High's general goal they're 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 a Gen Z thing like it even says in their bio, um, they wanted Gen Z and to the get Swifties into the are Grammys. a very powerful fan base. Very Ashley powerful. said it, this is what Ashley says about this, and I found this fucking hilarious. She read into this that Sweetie mm -hmm. High and perhaps the Grammys themselves were perhaps using her and her Swifty prowess to get Taylor to come. Like somehow Ashley being there as Swifty ambassador would get Taylor to come. She literally alludes to that. Like Ashley being there would make Taylor want to come, period. It's delusional. Like it's actually beyond delusional. I don't know, I don't know what the word is to describe this, but this is unhinged. Like this is truly, she's gone so far. She's really high on her own fucking supply, truly. Like she, this is she, this she, is craziness. She says that they tried to pay her off. 
She says that sweet mom tried to pay her off. Uh, she says, this is Mary, the best Mary, part. Oh, this I'll, I'll give you $800. I'll give you $800. But Ashley said, no. No, she did not. That. About you know why she did money. that? She it's was, not about being, the first money. of all, if I was trying to, if I was trying to pay someone off, I would fucking know that $800 is not enough to, it's not enough to bribe someone. This is a PR company with millions of dollars. If they were trying to pay you off, it would be a couple grand, you know, a couple grand. They offered her 800 because I'm sure they felt bad that she flew all the way to LA and had all these expenses. They didn't feel bad enough to cover all her expenses. They didn't feel bad enough to give her a couple grand, but they said, you know what? You went to the trouble. Here's $800. That can cover your flight. You chose to bring your husband, so that's on you. Here's your here's 800 bucks for your flight. And she should have said, okay, thanks, and gone on her merry way. But no, she's trying to be bribed. They're trying to keep... This is the whole thing. Now it's a social justice cause. They're trying to keep me silent. I don't want this to happen to anyone else. This couldn't happen to anyone else. No one else is as stupid as you to think that you were important enough to attend and be disinvited anyway. They ran out of tickets. They ran and out of tickets. She took such deep... Like, I, I understand, like, she was deeply humiliated by this because she did. It is true. She did have to post a TikTok by she the did night, post January it. 31st. Yeah. She did post it, and she was it's humiliated. It's like the PR company... The PR company was being a little unprofessional. That's for sure. They were not treating her well. But again, them's the rules. This is Hollywood, baby. Your talent. Talent gets treated like shit, especially when you have no bargaining power. When you are not a big star, they don't treat you very nice. And Ashley seems to think that she is... She was the only influencer that was being well, invited. She, she was believed the main event. She had such a right to be at the Grammys that she logged on. And who did she get into the DMs of? The CEO of the Recording Academy, Harvey Mason Jr. This is this what was shocked said. me. Quote, hey, to Harvey Mason Jr. Hey, I wanted to reach out personally. If you have a second to talk, I just landed in LAX a few hours ago as I was to attend the main event and walk the red carpet of the Grammys. I was asked to get a PCR, and that was in process, but I landed, and I was told that I was no longer attending because they didn't have a ticket for me anymore. I was wondering if you could shed some light on this situation. This is like a buffet to me. So much to fucking pick apart bozo behavior. What the fuck does Harvey Mason Jr. know about a third party gathering Gen Z TikTok influencers to get kids interested? What does he in care? What would he know about this? What Why does, does he, he care? care? What light could he shine? And another thing that's really he's interesting. Trying to, he's trying to coordinate Beyonce on the red right. carpet. He's who's, not thinking who about Ashley. Is this bozo in my fucking DMs? <laughs> and she also, why does she have to get a PCR? Uh, generally, I think if you're vaccinated, I don't, mm. you know, I don't have all the the vaccine well, yeah, codes that's, anymore. That's the suspicious part. But you, maybe because it's an event, I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe she doesn't have a booster, which I could believe. There's no um, vaccine mandate though anymore, so I guess. Right. Well, I, I mean, but that's, but that's, like, that's if another. You're, if you're not vaccinated, then you, you have to get a PCR to attend the Grammys. Like I would think that that's the case. I don't think everybody yes. that was there, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to get a PCR. I'm not 100 percent on this, but that's my understanding. Like either way, why? either way, putting that either aside, way. Either way. the rest of the message. That's it. I mean, the audacity. And also, because... let's, okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this from a business perspective, right? Because what followed after this, this is the part that really torpedoed any chance she ever has of working with a PR agency who honestly deliver brand deals and good opportunities for influencers. You really should keep them on your side. It's a professional relationship that's very important to have as a content creator. Also as a journalist, I had to maintain many relationships with PR people. It's advantageous to you. Like you're doing something for them and they're giving you something in return. Like it's a, it's a quid pro quo. There's an exchange going on. And part of that exchange is that you are professional with each other. And if you want to build a relationship with someone, you, um, you, you, Give them allowances. You treat them fairly. You say, okay, I'm sorry, this opportunity didn't work out. I hope you'll keep me in mind for anything else you have in the future. Or you can even say like, hey, I'm a little pissed off that I came all the way. And the response that they gave to her was, we're going to, we can give you 800 bucks. And she should have said, I'm disappointed, but thank you. And I will go on my merry way. Let me know if you have any extra tickets. I would love to come since I'm here. But, you know, I, I, I get it. It's fine. Whatever. Instead, 
I thought when she posted that TikTok that she reached out to the CEO of the PR company, which is no. already bad. That's already like that's already going above the head of the person that you're communicating with, who is likely a low level person who's not making these decisions personally is literally the bone. She's the bone carrier of her PR agency. Right. So she goes not to the CEO of Sweetie High. She goes to the CEO of the Grammys who Which are working with this PR agency, probably on a contract. Yeah, it's they probably have 10 different contracts with 10 different PR agencies that they've given a certain amount of tickets to for everyone, right? So Ashley going to the CEO of the Grammys is like going to the her boss's boss's boss. Like you are going all the way up and you're no one, you're nothing. You're literally nothing here. The person, the CEO of Sweetie High is more powerful than you. And yet you think that it's within your, she thinks she's well within her rights to reach out to the CEO of the Recording Academy. It's like the level of myopia and narcissism here is just beyond. So obviously she says then that she got into a heated exchange with the PR person. Why? Because you probably almost got them fired. You probably almost had this person lose their job because you couldn't put on your ugly tinfoil dress and get on the red carpet and say, I'm not Taylor Swift. Wink. <laughs> I'm not Taylor Swift. But if you think I am, I'll take a picture with you. It's crazy to me. And so she's she thinks that it's outrageous that the PR person got mad at her for doing that. And it's like, girl. Then, then it's like, then it's like, oh, now my reputation in Hollywood is ruined. I'm sure the PR person said, you're never working in this fucking town again because you just showed your ass to the entire world. The PR people talk. This industry is about connections. It's about personal relationships. If you piss <clears throat> off someone on this extent, if you almost get someone fired, you're done. You're done. The way also that Ashley like spoke about Miss Marion who she was communicating with. This is a, a, a person at Sweetie High. This is the person she was communicating with. She acts like, you know, after I went to the Grammy CEO, Marion was enraged and she harassed my husband. She said, shut up, we will pay you. Silence, weak. Be quiet, weak. No. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, she said, they Wig, were don't begging use your powerful her, voice. trying to pay her off, trying to get her to other events so that she would shut up. And this is what she says about that. Now, she got real fucking mad, and she said, I will not stand down and go quiet. They manipulated <laughs> I love this. This is my favorite one. This and made a mockery <laughs> of me. <laughs> Girly, they didn't. I mean, mockery of you, I guess so. so crazy. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take you made a mockery and I do of your dad about self. that. Um, come on. She says, I won't be another one of their victims that got paid off to go quietly. She says that Sweetie High is threatening her worth in Hollywood, her brand, and her reputation. And my opinion on that is that no, girly, you have threatened your brand and your reputation. You DM'd also what Harvey brand? Mason what Jr. reputation? Instead of just taking the fucking L, you and your clown team of fake publicists and fake managers mishandled literally the situation. Who are just, they are, and they I are men who did you, not go. I fucking guarantee you, Taylor fucking knows about this, and she knows about these rumors that there's a restraining order against you. She knows about the rumors that she hates you, and she could say something, and she hasn't, and she won't. Ooh, Good night, clown. It's over. Good like, you literally <laughs> clowned yourself. The show, and that is end scene. The That's show it. ended. Literally. It's done. That's it. Ashley's that done. It. She really is done. That's it. She's finished. She's not going to make any money from her influencing career because no brand is going to work with her because she's toxic waste. And this is the thing now. She has revealed herself to be unreasonable and difficult to work with. Celebrities... Actual famous people with talent, Katherine Heigl, for example, known to be difficult on a set. She didn't work for 10 years and she's Katherine Heigl. Ashley, you didn't even get to go on the set of the job. You didn't even get to fulfill the job description and you still got fired. You still got fired. She's done. She's truly done. Taylor's never meeting her. Taylor's never noticing no, her. No, it's over. The era for is, is not going to be a good time for Ashley. People don't like her uh, with good reason at this point, I think. And it, it, this really was so delicious to me. It was so delicious. And I can't imagine what kind of delusion is going to unfold from here because it can only get crazier. 
Well, she, if, she, you know, if she knew what was good for her, she would just ghost. Like, it would be she, time to go back to being a nurse. Goodbye. Ghost yourself. Like, seriously, there's nobody... It's like before, like I said earlier, like, she has a weird core legion of, like, Stannies and Fannies. They're not here anymore. They're no, silence, they, radio they, silence. She, her, the, the things that she has said are getting fucking clowned and RT'd and fucking roasted. <clears throat> Everybody knows that she's a, a fucking Trumper now. And, you know, people are figuring out that it's not because you don't have any pictures of yourself from your childhood. It's that you simply have no Swifty proof because you never really were a Swifty and you were just on some weird gravy train. Everybody knows that now. What? Where do you go mm. from here? And also, like, unfortunately, her entire her entire fan fan base, let's say the the, the group of people that would maybe be drawn to Ashley are the Swifties. She has revealed herself to be a fake Swifty. And that is the cardinal sin of Swifty dumb. If you are a fake Swifty, you're done. You're finished. Nobody wants to talk to you anymore. You have to know your shit. You can say mean stuff. You can be controversial. We know this. But you have to have the card carrying legacy proof. And the Taylor, honestly, it's really hard to be a fake Swifty because the Taylor Swift universe is complex, it's layered. You can only know it inside and out if you experienced it firsthand. It's true at this point. Like you can't join in 2020 and sufficiently catch up to the point where you come across to fluent Swifties as being fluent in Swifty dub. She's not, and she's done. She's finished. Our friend who works for a PR agency, Steph, love ya. She said that Ashley is literally finished. She's finished. Like there is no, there's no chance that she's going to be given the opportunity to work again. And also my reputation in Hollywood, you live in Utah. Let's start there. You Hollywood. live in Mormon country, Hollywood. You, what would you do in Hollywood? Honestly, Ashley, what's your career? Like, what is it? If people want to hire you, what will they hire you to do? Oh, you could go to a kid's birthday party and pretend to be Taylor Swift. You could make good money doing that. You're not, she, she's probably is like, I'm going to be a guest star on Grey's Anatomy. That's what's in her brain. I'm going to be a guest star on Grey's Anatomy. Taylor's going to bring me up on stage because I look like her and she's going to meet me and my career is going to take off. Girly, girly, ding dong. <laughs> the extent it's to finished. which her, her ass has been shown is like unbelievable to me. And it happened like immediately, <laughs> like overnight, you know, here's me. If she had said, you know what, if she had taken the L and just like been like, Oh, they disinvited me. And like, just, just let the waves of your pathological liar pass. This all could have mm -hmm. been just a fever dream. And it all could have been over. Bridge. Instead, she decided to go clown. And people yeah, literally, are never she gonna went, forget this about crazy. you. Well, also the funniest thing ever is that we didn't have to know any of this happened. Even if she did all this crazy shit, even if she did see, DM the CEO of the Grammys, we didn't have to know that she went this insane. And also like, it probably would have trickled through the industry, through the PR people, but like, it's there. It is, she posted the receipts of her acting the fool and now anyone can see it. She literally did it to herself. The only reason why her brand and reputation is being damaged beyond belief is because she provided the evidence that she acted like a fucking Karen. And I think like the scapegoat ism of her response, like sweetie high is like a villain. And it's like, well, <laughs> they're trying, they're trying to <laughs> silence me. They don't care about you. They have more followers than you. The agency has more followers than you. But now <laughs> I, the thing about like all of this is that you know why why was she pulled like why did they uninvite her there's lots of differing theories about this and obviously there's no proof on any of it but a lot of people think that um taylor doesn't like her and doesn't want her there and like also there's something strange about having a look-alike and the real person in the same room like there's there's some like to me that's kind of like a security risk like if she was coming in cosplay yeah that would kind of be a problem. But that's what she's gonna do. Like, Eris Tour is gonna, like, this. that's gonna be the next wave of Ashley drama that we need to uncover. 
because she could totally not dress like Taylor and go incognito and people wouldn't recognize her because she has to make a concerted effort to look like Taylor, which she will do because she wants attention. But I, I think we've seen a couple of times influencers even going to concerts and getting mobbed and being escorted out because the security's job at a venue is not to protect concert goers. Like it's not to make sure that you're not getting attacked. If you become a security nightmare, they're going to take you out. They're not going to bring you to a special section and let you sit with Taylor family that's not what's gonna happen baby they're gonna escort you from the premises and if ashley starts a mob she will not be able to stay and watch the show and then there will be another meltdown of epic proportions if i were ashley the smartest thing to do would be to go to the show and post nothing about it no fucking chance she would ever do that or sell your tickets but she's not gonna she will show up in taylor drag and something bad will happen well i can't really imagine like where her tiktok content goes from here like, what are you going to say now? Like, what are you doing? What's the point? Are you just going to keep just like business as usual? Like keep going back to your AI shit? Where well, her Instagram is like that. Her, her Instagram story has already kind of gone back to normal. Like before she really? posted that I haven't seen response, anything. she was like, I'm at the airport. I'm going home. <laughs> like back to my kids. Like, yeah, you are. Back to my kids. My husband loves. Her first and last trip to LA. You can never go she back to the Santa city Monica again. Pier or something. Yeah, she's done. She's finished. Um, I think that kind of wraps it up. That literally wraps it up. Like that is uh, that's the story. And Madeline, boy, I want to commend was. you. I want to commend you on the reporting that you did. Citizen journalism <laughs> at its finest. Citizen journalism. There are New at its York finest. Times reporters that haven't uncovered bones like you they, found. They they didn't. They they couldn't. They weren't at the site. I mean, the, the, I, it's so silly, the places that I had to go to find information. Because you Google her and nothing comes up. Just articles about <laughs> her looking not, like Taylor Swift. Because no one cares. Nobody no one cares. cares. That's why. No one cares. Nobody cares. Except for us. We care. Well, I mean, come we on. Care. But, you know, this is, this is the kind of proprietary content that only the snakes can produce. That's true. It is. We're scribes. You know, we're, we, we're chronicles. This is, this, this was made for us. In fact, yeah. this, the, the levels to this that we've been able to unpack here, the fake Swifty dumb, the, the PR nonsense, the, you being the same age, like you and I, we have different realms of expertise and we've come together and we've put a historical document of what happened with Ashley. The thing about Ashley and is that she's crazy. She She's lied crazy. about her entire life story. <laughs> She's just a liar. To, just to, she is just a liar. To what? Like I still don't fully know. For what a moment, the was. for a I moment, mean, for a moment, for and a the moment to meet Taylor. Well, the thing <laughs> is, the best thing ever is that she did not expect the moment to be bad. She was like, everyone's gonna gag and love it, and it's like again, that's where the delusion comes in. Like Swifties are not gonna be happy for you. Never. They're not happy for each other or themselves. It's crazy. No. But you know, if you if you like this content, you really need to subscribe to the Patreon because that's how we make it. Patreon.com slash Rhythmologist. That's where it is. We're also on Instagram at Evolution of a Snake. I've been told that we post really good memes. We do. We do. And we're going to be uh, doing Taylor Talk soon for all of our Patreon listeners. We're going to be getting into, obviously, Haler at the Grammys. Legendariness. Mm. All too well losing at the Grammys not legendariness, um, the after party. Actually, there's been a lot of Taylor, Taylor happenings to discuss on Taylor Talk. So, I mean, we'll see you behind the paywall very soon. Do you have any parting words, I Madeline? Don't, any I don't, I don't. You know what, my parting words were that Taylor is never going to meet this fucking potato head ever <laughs> in her life. And that's really the final nail. That's all I have to say else. Thanks, everybody, so much for um, <laughs> subscribing to the Patreon and for viewing my bones. Thank you for coming to my museum. Thank you for viewing my bones. Yes, this is my collection It's a beautiful collection. Thank you. It's just Thank on you. display for one day and one day only. And if you would like to make a gift donation to the museum, patreon.com slash to, to keep curating exhibitions like this. One simply needs to have the cup shaken and the cup with a mm -hmm. cup of quarters. Shaking the cup. And shaking the cup's getting full. The Ooh, cups, the cups, the cups filling up. <laughs> the cups filling up. And, and we also have really fun discussion posts on the Patreon. And 
by the way, Madeline, I got an email today about how to reset my password. So you will finally be able to log in. Yeah, I can't I can't access the Patreon. I ha- I had to pay a dollar <laughs> to get into <laughs> to my make own the Madeline tier. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious all right but thank you we will see you in the next episode